Hello everyone. Um, so in this tutorial series, we're going to be creating um, an escape room type game, um, following on from the point and click sort of genre, uh, where you'll be clicking on clues uh, in order to try and escape the room. Uh, I'm theming mine as sort of a museum. The reason I chose museum is that it would allow me to create different random themes. I quite like the idea of a planet room, a science room and a Japan room. I'll talk to you about writing puzzles for it. But the main aim of uh, this tutorial series is to help teach you how to uh, use free uh, programs to create graphics. So we're going to use Inkscape, we're going to use GIMP, um, and also we're going to collate it together um, in Construct, which I will show you at a later date, which is um, a 2D game engine, uh, which is really, really good. You can use up to 100 events uh, for free, so you don't have to... Um, have an account for, for the game that we're going to make. If you wish to make more complex ones, you would. Um, but in the interest of keeping this completely free so people aren't having to pay for software, um, I'll keep it minimalist. Uh, and also, in addition to that, we're going to be uh, doing a little bit more animation in open tunes. Um, I have already shared a walk cycle video, uh, a little series about how to make a walk cycle for a character using Inkscape and open tunes. So if you haven't already watched that one, please do. We're going to use that character uh, just as sort of an introduction in the game. Um, there we go. Uh, so very simple. This is the sort of style that we're going to go for for our game. The sort of simple vectory, um, vectory sort of scenes. It's it's more about how we're going to uh, use the software. You getting used to the packages, but doing something cool uh, where you get something interactive out of it at the end. Uh, this isn't going to be any sort of uh, ready to release. Um, award-winning game or anything by any stretch of the imagination but the the idea really is that you're going to learn each and every part of the uh, the softwares that we're going to talk about and then you're going to sort of understand the pipeline a little bit more um, so I'll go over how I've broken down the tutorial periods that we're going to talk about um, that I'm going to do for you to follow this complete game uh, but first and foremost just to show you a little bit the planning that I've put into this okay so Here's my outline for how the game's going to work, quite simple. So it will work the same if you've ever attended uh, sort of an escape room in real life. You get a certain amount of time to get through uh, normally a number of rooms. Um, you'll use clues within that room, work out yourself, get onto the next one um, until you escape. Or sometimes you don't escape um, and then you lose essentially. So that's the idea and we're going to use the, the classic point and click genre. So you're going to be able to click different parts um, of the of the scene to interact with it. Um, there'll be things like you have to click them in a certain order or you have to find certain objects. Those are quite seek and find games are quite popular on things like iPads and at the moment um, I know I've played a few. Um, for reference, of course, but um, yeah, so this is the idea. So we're going to start with the title menu screen, uh, you know, your, your usual sort of pick your difficulty, um, but just an introduction to the game, some instructions on, on what the player is expected to do. We're going to put that all in one screen, okay? This is going to be sort of a minimalist, stripped down sort of game, or the less sort of stuff we have to put in the better. Then you'll be introduced to room one. You'll get a screen uh, that pop up, which will sort of give you a, a sort of idea about what you're supposed to do. Uh, sort of how it's going to work you know you don't want to give the the audience too much like I like I said before you give them two plus two you don't give them four the the, the fun of it is working for your meal is, is trying to work out what you're supposed to do rather than just like oh I have to click on on something and uh, and it will do something else so don't tell them that they'll work that out for themselves that's part of the fun of the game hence the tutorial levels that you get on a game so this first room would be a little bit easier um, I'm going to theme it on planet so we're going to have a look at that one uh, in this first tutorial, which won't, will go quite long because I'm, I'm breaking down what we're doing in the in the in this um, tutorial series, as well as actually doing the first tutorial, and we'll be learning a few other things uh, along the way, sort of drawing styles and things like that. Um, so you, once you've beaten that first room, you have a certain amount of time. So let's say you've got 10 minutes uh, real time to to beat all three rooms. So your timer would start as soon as you entered the room. You would solve the clues. Uh, and progress on to the next room with any luck. So if you were successful in, in unlocking it, you get an unlock transition, which would just be like a, a wipe up screen where you'd have a you know a padlock unlocking on like a black background or something like that. And then that would 
help us transition to the next room rather than having to do like a cut scene where a character walks from one room to the other uh, this will just speed up our workflow if you weren't able to beat the room in 10 minutes what would actually happen is that you would then um, go back so the flowchart would uh, would show you that you would then go back to the title menu so if you lose you get an out of screen time out of time lose screen so anytime you're beaten in any three of these rooms you get your out of time screen you lose and then it would take you back to the title menu to try and attempt it again maybe on a, a lower difficulty but if you're successful you get your unlock transition and that takes you into the second room which i'm going to theme on science okay so we're going to have a science themed room uh, this would present different puzzles, different theming. Uh, I've got some cool ideas of stuff like assets that I want to show you how to create in Inkscape, little animations that we're going to make for those assets uh, just to make the scene pop a little bit, make it look a bit more interesting. Uh, and so, obviously, again, if you don't beat that screen, you're out of time, you lose. If you do beat it, unlock transition, same as before. Excellent, I've unlocked it. I've got sort of a sense of achievement, that's good. You know, I know I'm doing something successful, I know I'm progressing through the game. Then I get onto the third and final room, which will be themed on Japan, sort of ancient Japan. Obviously, you can do a lot of stuff here with this, would be sort of um, more of a sort of cultural history room, is what I'm thinking. I'm imagining sort of the national history um, displays and things like that. That's what I've been. Um, very very inspired by for this sort of game theming uh, and then obviously if you don't beat that in the time same thing again you lose back to title but if you do you get your unlock transition uh, but this time that unlock transition would actually take you to a windscreen now we could theoretically do without the um, unlock transition and just jump straight to the windscreen but we'll have a look how that looks but then you get your congratulations you win happy days you know end of the game that could take us back to the title menu if you then wanted to, to play at a harder level or you know it could be the end of the game the, the user would click off the game so that's for discussion how this flowchart works but this i just wanted to give you a basic idea of what you're going to be expecting to create during this uh, tutorial series now you don't have to follow my theming for the room that's very important to remember otherwise we're all going to end up with the same game um you really you can add 15 rooms you can add you know don't have to be rooms at all but you know you can completely um take the parts of my game rip it apart and turn it into something new that's what i'm hoping for you don't have to follow it the whole way through it's just i want to show you how to make something complete and whole uh that's fully working and themed and interesting uh so that you could do similar you don't have to do the same i would use your own examples the stuff that you've planned this is just how you link it all together um so this is just my example, okay? But I wanted to do something interesting with my example. So that's that's where I've started off. Um, and let's break down how that's going to play out and what I'm going to teach you to do. So today, this first tutorial, okay, we're making our first scene in GIMP. We're then gonna go into Inkscape and create some, uh, some separate interactive assets. So anything that's gonna be basically made in GIMP is gonna be classed as the background. So that's gonna be the non-interactive static background that just creates our scene. Anything I create in Inkscape, and we'll talk about why we're doing them in GIMP and Inkscape in a minute, but anything I create in Inkscape is going to be a separate asset, okay? Now, some of those assets I will then take into um, OpenTunes and Animate. So if you imagine I'd made a fan asset, let's say, for the top of the room, I might make a simple fan rotation um, GIF that I can put into my game so that my scene doesn't appear static all the time. It just makes it feel a little bit more alive. Obviously, you'll have the timer ticking down in the corner of the screen and so on, but you do want a bit of movement in there to make it feel sort of a bit more engaging, a bit more interesting, all right? So you've got that option. Uh, this is what we're going to do. So, yep, we'll create our cool assets to put on top of our background, sort of integrated with it. Then we're going to move on to our second tutorial, which will be um, making pop-up introduction, explainer, screen asset, and, uh, and buttons okay so essentially we're going to be making the pop-up window that's going to pop up on top of our first our first scene so on top of our planet scene that will just explain a little bit about the game what you're expected to do give you um, a couple of sort of not clues I don't want to say clues because we're going to come on to that later but it'll give you an indicator on what is expected of you um, and then we'll look at making some some um, buttons for the game so how you would click through uh, different different parts of it how do you get rid of that explainer screen and so on 
the third tutorial we're going to make the huds we're going to make the heads up display so you're going to we're going to break down what that means but you're going to need things like a timer in the corner of the screen you're going to need to know what room number you're in uh, and, and so on okay so that's uh, that's the next part so we will create the hud we'll jump on to on the fourth one we'll make the room unlock transition so as we spoke we you know that will be quite a quick one but as we move from one room to another we're just going to create a nice little wipe up animation where you know the uh, where the frame moves from one to another okay um, so rather than just your in room one then room two suddenly will appear we need like a nice transition where it wipes from one to another so we're going to create a series of videos where we move from one screen to the next okay then we're going to create a point and click series five uh, video five sorry so uh, we're going to make our out of time so you lose screen so obviously we've only made one screen at the moment and we're collecting all the other assets that we're going to put together uh, all the other screens so we're going to make our you lose screen video six then we're going to finally make our second screen and the assets for that one so we're going to make our uh, science room in video seven we're going to make our japan room and the assets uh, in the eighth one we're going to make our windscreen ninth one we're going to look at making some clue pop-ups now what i mean by that is if any of you have done uh, escape rooms before there'll be there'll be clues to sort of try and help you through the room eventually so let's say you give the the audience uh 10 minutes to complete the um all three of the rooms to to get to the wind state to get all the way through if they're still in the first room after say four or five minutes you know the probability of them getting through all three of the rooms is quite low so you can give them hints now those hints can get more obvious as it goes along so this will be creating sort of if statements you know if player uh, is in room one um, and the time equals you know zero five dot dot zero zero you know five minutes uh play this animation and, and then that animation would be a quick pop-up where you know the transparency changes goes from zero percent to 100 where all of a sudden in the corner of the screen uh, a video will pop up which will give a hint to say you know look at this part of the room or you know why don't you try clicking on this and it will give the audience some information to help them through it just makes the game a bit more interesting it makes people a bit more engaged with it especially there's nothing more infuriating when you're stuck on a game and you can't beat it in those scenarios in escape rooms it's very common that the the, the game master will give you a clue to help you through them uh, at some stage it normally they won't give them to you until sort of later in the game to sort of help you through there it's not in their interest that you have to complete the game but it makes it a bit more engaging for you if at least you make it to the last room okay and you feel like you had a chance at winning so we're going to create some pop-up uh, little assets and we'll work those clues out as we go we'll only have a few maybe one or two for each room and that'll be a little animation that will play as if it's in the hud okay a little pop-up um and then create your own point and click tutorial video series 10 don't know why i keep reading the title but in the 10th one we're going to animate uh non-interactive background assets okay for each scene we're going to collate them together into looping gifs so essentially we will have created all these interactive assets for the screen uh, for our scenes and then in the 10th video what we're going to do is actually animate a couple of them probably one maybe two for each scene okay so we don't want it to be too too engaging but it might be something as simple as uh, like a fan like i said or we might have one of our planets in the planet room rotating or in the science room we might have like a little bunsen burner sort of flame going on and off or you know a bubbling science experiment or something a bit interesting um like that okay or you know something pops out something goes up if it's our space room it could be sort of something as simple as you know every every 30 seconds to a minute a rocket sort of launches goes up out the screen a little toy rocket and then comes back down um who knows we'll get to that in a bit uh create your own point and click oh, why do i keep reading it a uh, video 11 so um make a title screen with a looping gif animation so our title screen our first screen what i'm planning on doing is we'll have now that we've created all three of our scenes we'll have a little uh, thumbnail of each of the screen uh that there are three rooms and basically what that's telling the audience is is how many uh, rooms they've got to beat now i'm planning as part of the hud to say like you're in room one dash three so sort of imagine like mario kart where it will tell you you're on lap two of three your expectations are managed then you know how much further you've got to go it's like if you, if you know you've got 10 minutes and you know seven minutes are up and you're still in one of three you know you're probably not doing very well with it okay so it gives you an idea but also you'll get a preview of those three rooms in sort of small thumbnail version at the bottom and what i'm planning on doing just 
to integrate a bit of animation is using our, our walk cycle character that we created earlier. So um, remember, if you haven't already created that, look at that tutorial series that I posted here as well. Uh, and that character is going to walk from room to room. Now, it will look like he's seamlessly walking from left to right in room one. He'll disappear for a second, then come into room two, walk left to right, come into room three, walk left to right. So it will look like seamlessly just going through them. So that video will loop. And again, that's just to make uh, what could be a static, boring page if you were sitting on there. It could make it a bit more interesting. It's like an old school Sonic and stuff like that. When you stopped interacting with the screen, you stop pressing buttons, Sonic after a couple of seconds starts tapping his foot and looking at you like he's bored. Uh, that's just a little sort of uh, animation that the programmers have put in there to, to make it a bit more interesting and sort of to give you a command almost. But it just it just makes what could be a static screen a lot more uh, engaging and interesting. It just adds a little bit of fun to it. Uh, and it's a good use for our character walk cycle there. Okay, so I thought that would be interesting. Uh, we'll make that on the title screen where also there'll be a little bit of information on, on how to play the game. It'll be almost like a double up as a, a tutorial screen as well as a title. Um, like the expectations you're outlining there for, for what the game's going to be. Um, so the, the audience get an overview. And then in video 12, here we go, we're starting to compile the game. So we're going to go into Construct, like I spoke earlier. We're going to use 2.0. Difference really, 3.0 is more powerful. Uh, it's more up to date. I guess it's about a year old now, maybe. We're in 2020. I'm not sure. It might be a couple of years old now. But um, essentially, what it does is it's... Um, programming without programming so we're just able to use events we, we click on sprites and so on uh, we won't have to write any code it will be if player one icon collides with you know player two icon then destroy player one icon it's that sort of thing okay so it makes life a lot easier uh, it's all event driven rather than having to write any code but also uh, most importantly sort of there's a free download where we can do a hundred events or a hundred lines of um, information for our game which would be enough for what we're going to do hopefully uh, at least anyway the way I planned it is so um, that will give us that will give us an interesting insight so we're going to do a part one um, where essentially we're just putting down the basic code we're also going to cover how to add your sound effects and the soundtrack to it uh, to make the game again a little bit more interesting and, and you know maybe our, our music changes room to room and you know faster pace will, will make the audience seem uh, feel a little bit more rushed and so on and then in the 13th uh, video uh, we will be still constructing it obviously I'm not expecting it all getting done in one this will take a little while and I wanted to break it down a little bit we're talking more about the actions that that make you assemble it uh, and also in this one we'll be looking at how we produce a timer okay it's one of the most important things part of this game is that timer okay so how do we produce that timer and how we're then going to write that into the code because that's how we we work out whether the whether the player has won or lost and then in the last tutorial this will be an optional one but in the 14th one we're going to create events to uh, to make various difficulties for the game okay and what an escape room difficulty means really is not that we're going to change the puzzle you could you could do that that would be possible i mean i'm i'm don't think particularly in, in 100 events that would be possible but what we're going to do for the difficulty is, is have three settings where you can play on say easy medium hard if you do it on easy you get 12 minutes to complete if you do it on medium you get nine minutes and you know if you do it on hard you get five minutes to do all three rooms or something like that okay now obviously once you've completed it once on easy our game won't really have any replay value because there won't be different puzzles you could just as easily write that in to say you know if the players played it that they're, they're different puzzles or you could you could write different puzzles uh, for each uh, level that uh, for each difficulty that would be more than possible um, but but at this stage with what we're going to do just to show you the basics we're not going to do that okay so last thing i want to talk to you about before we get going is, is getting a concept together uh, like a mood board uh, a collage i always like to do this for any project i start because then you've got an influence but if i'm going to be doing a space room i sort of need to know what a space room sort of look like so my first port of call would be to uh, start to do some research on um, you know museums uh, other museums because i'm recreating a museum so if your game uh, for example um, is about I don't know, you know, it's, it's about, uh, you know, uh, the snow, you know, it's about the Arctic or something like that. I would go and find references. What do igloos look like? What do, you know, uh, fish ponds look like that out there where they do ice fishing? You know, what, what do the trees look like out there and so on? So that I was recreating something that looked a bit more believable. Uh, I'm going for this sort of style, this sort of very uh, caricature sort of, um, sort of 
juvenile sort of uh, vector, which is really cute, uh, simplistic. We'll go for this sort of look. Uh, things like, you know, satellites, that's quite important. How do I sell that this room is space, basically, is what I'm trying to think. And I, the ceiling I quite like, that it's sort of black with the lights, so that could look a bit more like stars. You know, we've got these cool looking sort of... Um, spaceships and spacecrafts and so on. I like the vector, uh, very simple rockets and so on. The planets look cool. So obviously like this is a real room where you've got all the planets hanging. That would be quite cool to do something like that. Might create like a touch screen as well. So it's very clear that it's a museum. So this is like a, a concept render that someone's done for a museum that doesn't exist yet. But you know, you've got the information on the walls. Uh, you've got, we will ignore the people, but you've got the, the touch screens and so on and the information stands and the planets, satellite dishes, but it gives you an idea. This is sort of the look I'll probably go for, for the, for the planets and so on when we get into Inkscape. So let's get started with our scene. We're going to come into GIMP. Okay, so GIMP's a free download. Like I said, this is essentially the free version of like an alternative to Photoshop. Um, I'm trying to do it completely free so everyone's got access to this um, tutorial period. You wouldn't necessarily have to, to pay for any software here. So when we get started, we're going to create something new uh, and this is going to dictate how big our game is going to be essentially. So, you know, the first background I make is going to set the tone for everything. So I'm going to make mine HD. I'm going to make it 1920, 1080. By standard, that, that's a good size. I don't really need to make it any bigger than that. I don't need to be thinking about doing it for 4K monitors or anything like that. I'm quite happy with, um, with posting mine at 19, 20, 10, 80. Okay, so that gives me my canvas. We've spoken about canvases before, but this gives me my background. For those of you familiar with Photoshop, this is pretty good, okay? Now, um, if I want to change that layout, I've got just to give you an idea about layout, obviously my tools are all here, the information on those tools, so the size and the, of the brush and so on, all that information is here. Uh, my layers panels here, which is obviously very useful, and then I've got all my information up here uh, for other things like brushes and that. Now, if you want to add any more um, tools um, into your to your navigation window you can you can add them here from windows uh, dockable dialogues and i quite like to have undo history uh, here so it'll boot my undo history so if i want to undo um certain parts so i obviously i can press control z but if i want to go back three or four stages i can do that quite easily um and that i don't think when you first install it anyway mine didn't that doesn't come up so um yeah good stuff okay right i just need to pause for two seconds to answer a discord question two seconds okay so the first thing i'm gonna do sort of here is is just change this background land name so i've double clicked on it and i'm going to click and just call this um sketch because what i'm essentially going to do in the background is sort of sketch the rough layout of what i want my scene to look like okay i'm just gonna have a rough idea of uh, of what the room is going to look like so that I can then draw over the top of that. And and for this room, we're going to talk about um, one point perspective. Uh, sometimes we use two point perspective, but we're going to talk about how to create one point perspective in a scene. So it will look like the user is looking in at the room, um, just creates a realistic room so we can orientate everything correctly. And this is this is the difference between one flat screen that looks like a painting on your wall to a screen uh, that looks like it's got a bit of depth. And this is the important part that we're going to do today. OK, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come up and we're going to use our paintbrush tool. OK, you can, if you really want, use the pencil. It doesn't really oh, it doesn't really matter. There's my thing from yesterday. So let's make sure I change my brush. Um, I will choose. I accidentally created my room as a brush yesterday uh, when I was mocking up how this was going to look. So that was useful. Um, so here's my paintbrush. Let's just have a look at that one. And here's my pencil. Let's just show you the difference between the two. Not too much difference, OK? So I've just control Z to get rid of that. So I'm just going to do my paintbrush. It can be a bit finer, but I don't want my size to be so large. So what I'm going to do, probably come down. Let's either drag it or I can type it. Uh, so I could change that to, let's say 10. Let's see what we get there. Probably still a bit thick. So let's change that now to uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, five. Let's go for, so I might use these arrows. Yeah, that's cool. OK, I'm happy with that. So we're going to change it to five. It doesn't really matter what color you want to go for. I've chosen a gray. So if you just want to choose a color here, that's absolutely fine. 
Um, we're going to make this layer uh, invisible later, but also we'll, we'll make it slightly opaque so we can put it over the top of everything and really see what we're doing. But um, yeah, so we're going to use a paintbrush tool and what we're going to do is just sketch out the background, okay, of what we're going to do. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put our, our perspective point, our horizon point, we're going to put a point that our whole um, that's going to dictate the angle of everything that goes on in our screen. So I'm going to base mine about here, uh, nicely, um, sort of in the middle of my screen. I could measure that if I really want, but I'm going to place it here. I mean, I might draw it a bit bigger, but that's that's the dot, and you'll see why it's important in a minute that everything is going to orientate to. Okay, so that's an important dot. So it's very important you put this dot down. Okay, because everything's going to um, angle towards it all right so that's cool now we've got a dot in our screen what I might do actually thinking about it is i might um whoops i didn't mean to add layer mask sorry i've just got to get used to uh what all their shortcuts are in this um gimp compared to photoshop so i might just copy that over uh, so i'm i'm ready to draw in a different layer um actually come to think of it i'll just draw a different layer uh whoops a different layer, create new layer, that's fine. We'll call that layer, and we'll call this sketching. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, and we'll actually change the name of that to dot. As you can see, I'm making this up on the spot, but that's fine. Okay, so we'll, we've got our sketching layer here, that's fine. And we've got our dot layer, which has also got a white background. Now, if you do want to obviously fill in your backgrounds you're more than welcome to you don't really have to but you can come to bucket fill i'm going to make sure my drop color is white and i can just change my background color there okay plain and simple you don't have to though because we don't need a background this is just this layer essentially that we're going to do is just the sketching layer okay so we're just going to um we're just going to uh, draw the rough outline uh, and then we're going to delete those lines later you're not going to be able to see them all right so uh, it's really just a reference for us. So let's draw out what the rest of this room is going to look like. So I'm working on my sketching layer. Now, <clears throat> let's get our brush up. Okay, so what we're going to do uh, is try and create sort of the base of our room, uh, just sort of lightly sketched out, uh, just so that it can go over the top um, of our other layer. So we've got an idea of what we're trying to achieve um, with our room. So you need to do sort of a plan beforehand. Uh, and I'm gonna teach you first point perspective as well, like I've just sort of spoken about. Um, and I'm using a Wacom Intius graphics tablet, which is quite useful. You don't necessarily have to have one. Um, it's just as easy to do with your mouse. It's just, I find it a bit more um, liberating to draw with a, a graphics tablet, even though mine's quite a cheap alternative one, it's still, uh, it still just feels a bit more natural uh, drawing with it. Okay, so what we're going to do here, obviously I'm on my sketching layer. Grey is my base colour. Um, now, one important thing to realise uh, when we're talking about first point perspective, you can draw horizontal and vertical lines as per normal. Okay, and you'll see what I mean in a minute. But then all the other lines will come and point towards this point. So they'll always intersect this point that we've drawn. So let's show you what I mean. So this is gonna be our back wall. So I've, I've put a dot down there. If I hold, let's just practice a little bit with a brush actually. If I hold control with my brush, you can see it's choosing paint dropper to change my color. If I hold shift down, what you'll notice is I get this line come out. Okay, so I'm holding the shift button. So I held control to get to change the color of it. Now I'm holding the shift button down and it will create a straight line for me like that. Okay. Like, so if I really wanted to do that, right? I don't want to do that. That's fine. But let's, um, let's change this back to like a gray. Okay. Um, so what, I can do so I've put down that point so if holding shift I can make those lines that's great but what I want to do is sort of ensure that this goes in a horizontal straight line so what I can do is whilst holding shift I'm also holding alt uh, also holding control I apologize <laughs> looking at my keyboard saying the wrong thing uh, so I'm holding control and shift so I held shift first and then I pressed control that's important the order you do it in uh, so now I can only do it at these incremental angles, so 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and so on. But here, I'm going to draw a horizontal line. So if I, I've only clicked once, I'm holding it down. If I click again, that will put that line down for me. Now I'm holding it again. 
I'm just holding it down, not letting go of it. Let's draw to about there. Now, this one I'm going to have to line up a bit by eye, but it's not the end of the world. I can always rub it out at the end. Any bits that go wrong. Like so, then I let go. Excellent. So this is going to be the back wall of my screen, of my room. Now at the moment it just looks like a square plonked in, in the middle of a, a room, I get that. Now we will come uh, to use the rubber tool and just, just neaten all these edges up in a minute, but I'm not going to do that until the end until I've got the whole thing. Now what I mean by this line here, this dot, is everything in my room is going to go through it. So if you imagine, uh, let's put the dot here, if I imagine roughly where that's going to go, so that would if I intersect the corner, so I'm looking into this room, I've got to imagine, I'm standing here, you're the audience, uh, I'm standing here and I'm looking into this room, this is the back wall of this room, so all of the points in my room have got to come through that line, okay, so if I'm to do that, I mean I'm just going to freestyle it a little bit, but let's click on the corner of this room here, just show you what I mean, now I'm holding shift, I'm not holding control this time, because if I hold control obviously it, it locks it in to sort of, well, that looks to me like 10 degree increments, but I'm just holding shift and I'm going to eyeball. So I'm going to, I'm, what I'm trying to do is line up with that dot. So it looks like it'll intersect that dot and I'm going to click by accident. Whoops. Um, and I'm going to go about, about there. Does that look about that? Yeah, that's pretty good. Now, what might have probably been a bit nicer is if I move the dot so that I had my uh, room probably coming off the screen a little bit like there um, in fact we might change that in a minute because that will probably look a little bit better um, if we had a room that was a bit more a bit more like that I think actually yeah so we're just putting down our lines to get that so what we could do on this dot layer let's have a look so if I were to I know I'm working on the dot there at the moment, but I'm just working out where I want that dot to go. So if I work that out there, let's put our dot roughly about there. Okay. Now we will quickly use the rubber tool because I don't need that. Um, whoops. He says he'll use the rubber tool. So let's rub that out. Oh, let's rub that out, he says. There you go. I was leaning on both my mouse and my, um, okay, so I've put one in the sketching layer by accident as well, so if I click on the sketching layer, there you go, I've just got a couple of random dots, I mean, you don't have to do this, but it's quite useful too. Now, this gives me a good example to show you then how I can also erase things. Um, now, obviously the size of the brush is the same size, now if I just wanted to make sure I, sell, I got rid of this this line here you've got your free selection tool up here okay which is essentially the lasso tool in photoshop and i can just freehand let's try and get to the corner without messing that up uh he says i can just and then if i double click that creates this sort of line for me now i can either hit delete and it will delete whatever's inside or i could use the brush tool uh, and just brush over it and it will make sure that i won't delete anything in there so now if i go to uh select uh, and let's make sure I've selected none. Uh, that's fine. So it's unselected that. Come to the rubber. Let's just rub out that bit there. And there was a little nub in there I wanted to get rid of. That's that. Oh yeah, on the wrong lap. Sketching. So if I, working on the sketching layer again, I know I've got rid of my dot, but I'm going to dictate because of where I put my square down, I'm going to dictate where that dot goes in a sec by this line. So remember, I put down a dot by clicking once. Uh, he says, click once. Hold shift. Uh, I want the room. So if I'm thinking, this is the this is going to be the floor, this is going to be the wall. So if I'm looking at that, what makes the nicest sort of view? Something about like that. So it doesn't quite come to the corner, but something a bit like that. Okay, so I've put down that point there. Now if I follow that line up, just come onto my dot layer. If I follow that line into the middle, we're gonna base everything from that point there. So I've put my little point there, which now gives me the line to follow for this other room. So I'm working from the corner. Uh, let's eyeball that. 
It's probably about there, isn't it? Yep, that's fine. I'm not going to put that line in yet, and I'll show you why in a second, because I want to create a bit of depth here. I don't just want it to be a flat room where we just go up to one wall. I want to create like a, a little sort of corridor behind here, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute, because it's a bit more interesting. Uh, and then, so I need to create this wall. So if I look at that line there. So what you're trying to do is making sure that that line goes through that dot. So right, I couldn't have it there, because then if I look at that line, it would it would completely miss that dot. Or I couldn't have it there, because obviously that would then go down there. However, if I want to make sure it goes through that dot. Now, if you were drawing this with a pencil, you'd use a ruler, obviously. Um, but something like that probably works. So that line there mm, might be a bit sharp. And I'm being a bit, being a bit OCD with this. Um, but I want to get it right, I want to get perspectives right, because when I start to make all the objects and that for the room, they'll feel slightly off if I haven't got the perspectives right. So if you want to make a ruler, you don't necessarily need one, but if I wanted to make a straight line ruler, you just drag out from the side like so. So you click on the ruler at the top and drag down. So these are guides essentially, so if I wanted to make a guide, and if I wanted to draw like a horizontal line, so just control Z of those, but if I wanted to draw would use my brush along it and I dragged along that line you can see I'm making a perfect straight line because I'm drawing along it but the second I come off of it like so so you have to make sure you've got a steady hand to drag along um, I mean you don't have to be precise exactly but you have to keep close to the line because as soon as you jump away from it too far if you watch like that it thinks right it doesn't want the line anymore so I can undo all that Okay, but that just gives you an idea if you wanted to draw straight lines here for your room, you could you could use guides uh, and so on. But let's let's show how we make a bit of depth. So we've got this side wall. This is going to be the roof at the moment. Uh, we've only got two rooms. We are going to create a little corridor off of here and a little corridor off of this wall here. But uh, I just wanted to put the baselines in at the moment so you could understand what we were doing. So what we're going to do, actually, let's use those guidelines because it'll it'll be a good little task to do so i'm just going to create the top of uh, the little corridor is going to come there the bottom is going to come to about there uh we're going to use i'm just going to click my dot there uh, and i'm going to draw along so i'm just going to paint along that line to about there let's also paint along this Sorry, keep clicking, still getting used to GIMP. Click along there. Excellent. You can use a guide again if you really want. Uh, I mean, you could have just as easily done this with, um, could have just as easily done this freehand by holding the control, huh, behind the control and shift and the paintbrush. But I just wanted to have an excuse to show you guides really. Uh, so let's click on my guide, uh, not my drawing, my guide. Make sure my guide is selected. Okay. Make sure my guide is, and then we're just going to drag them off the screen like so. So that's what gets rid of them. So if we just drag them right off the screen, they disappear. Okay, so this is like the back row uh, room. Obviously, I've gone over a little bit there, but you'll see that. So we're still using this line here. But now we're starting our wall from here. So let's use that line. I'm going to hold my, oh, I've got my move tool. Let's make sure I've got my brush tool. So I'm going to put my line, I'm going to put my dot here. I'm going to use this line here. So this, so I'm eyeballing where, I, where it looks like it's going to intersect that dot, which is about there. Does that look like it? Yeah, probably just about. It might be a bit sharp, but. And then we're going to click here. Remember, it's got to intersect this line here. So that goes about there. Okay, cool. Um, actually, with that being said, being that I want to make a door from here to here. So when I was talking about the title screen earlier, I'm going to have my character like in my title screen look like he's walking from a corridor here so he's going to be masked so we get used to masking so he, he doesn't appear he's going to be transparent outside of the canvas then he's going to be 
uh, appear, walk across the canvas, and then he's going to be masked again as he looks like he walks through this corridor as well. So I do need, they don't necessarily have to be perfectly in line, but I do need my floor probably to come to about here. So that means that this is set back a little bit too far because of that angle. So what I really need is that line there to come to about here. Um, so what I can do, like we spoke about a minute ago, um, let's just change that size to 10. Uh, and let's rub out. So with my graphics tablet, it seems that I keep accidentally holding it down, which then gives me the file menu. Whereas if I use the mouse, it's, it's a bit easier. But um, so what I'm actually going to do is bring my line out from about here uh, to there. And I've forgotten to change the size of the brush back, haven't I? So let's change that yeah, to 1000. That was what I was going for. Uh, let's change that to five. Bring that from here. Hold control and shift. Now let's press shift first. There we go. Now, if I were to do the corner of my room, so we're looking about there, should be fine. Okay, and that that then is the basis of our room. Okay, now we're going to just draw in some doorways. And then once we've drawn in our doorways, I'm quite happy to start decorating this room. Okay, and then once we've got our base layer down um, and we've decorated, what I mean by that is textured the walls and the floor and the ceiling and that, then we're going to take it into Inkscape and start to create assets on top of it using it as a base layer so that I can ensure that I'm getting... Um, that I'm getting the right perspective for my assets and things like that. So I can't just draw like a flat table front on and then try and stick it against this wall because it won't look right. Um, I'm just trying to rub out that. But as you can see with the graphics tablet, it doesn't enjoy it as much. Switch back to mouse and it works nicely. So uh, you don't have to do that, but I just, just want to clean it up a little bit. I know this is... Um, like I said, this is just the background sketch that we're not necessarily going to use. This is just for reference, but still nice to keep things tidy. So what I want to do is cut a doorway in here into this wall so it looks like it goes somewhere. Now remember, vertical and horizontal lines will always remain straight. Um, so, And it's just when we do the angled lines that it goes towards this horizon line. So I'm going to cut a doorway in here. So what I might do, so on this wall, my doorway is going to look like it's coming off the screen and on this wall i'm going to do it so that it looks like um it comes in sorry get the discord so it looks like it there's a bit of a gap in the wall and then the doorway starts so let's do the, the door on this side first uh, because this one's probably a bit more simple and then it's going to dictate where the door on the other side is going so what i'm going to do is click here on my line still got my brush tool holding shift now i'm holding control to make that straight Okay, I'm creating my straight line like that. So that's the height of my door. Now, how far does my corridor go? Well, my corridor goes off the screen. So the way to do that is I'm going to click on this point here again. Now, remember, horizontal and vertical lines still remain straight. I wouldn't then draw this line from here to here because that would just follow that line there. So what I do is hold control, draw that off the screen there. This is the line that does matter though. Okay, so if I hold on here, okay, I'm going to try and line that up as best as I can with my eye, with the shift, so it's coming up at a slight angle like that. Okay, now that's created a doorway, although the only problem is obviously with the doorway that this now looks like this is a, one type of flooring and then that's a different type of flooring because you've got this line. You wouldn't necessarily have that line there. So what you can do, obviously you can either come in and use the lasso tool and delete it. Like I said, you know, highlight the area and delete it or you can use a paint dropper apparently. Whoops. Or you can use the erase tool. Get rid of that. And what it's supposed to look like really is that this doorway is open and that it's just going you know, the, the edge of the doorway would be like here or something like that, if you understand what I'm sort of saying. So this other line, the other edge of the doorway would just be coming off the screen here. Because what we're going to have, like I said, is the character in the title uh, menu walking from left to right in that animation. 
so I've created some depth here. So this is all first point perspective, okay? Now, what I've noticed I also probably need on there, or I could do, okay, if you wanted, we'll see how this looks. I might delete it, put this to do a horizontal line there as well. Uh, oops, I do want to keep that line. Rubbish, so let's put a dot down there. Put a dot down. So that makes it look like that's a flat wall and then that's the roof of it. Up to you whether you think that line helps it or not, but to me that helps differentiate a tiny bit. So that's our little roof. We're seeing it quite a sharp perspective of the corridor and that's our side wall of the corridor. Don't have to do it. It doesn't necessarily look right, but it works for me. Uh, and then my other door. So what I might do, drawn from sort of there to there. So what I could do here, is grab a ruler, grab a ruler and get it straight on that line. Use my line there as reference. Click there, um, and let's yeah, let's do this properly. Let's use a ruler there as well. Okay, so I'm just measuring the height. Control, come to there. Perfect. Okay, so I've got my doorway, so it lines up opposite. It, realistically in the perspective of the room that might not be quite correct but this i know for a fact this will make my animation a lot easier for that um screen we're going to do later let's just get our move tool up get rid of these off the screen doesn't matter top or bottom uh then i can use my brush tool again and we're going to use that line remember let's get that right so it goes I eyeball that kind of angle there. So probably go there. Let's hold that down. So I'm, ho whoops, I'm holding control and shift. Remember shift first, come down to that line. So there's my doorway. Obviously it doesn't look like it's got any depth at the moment. The way we're going to do that is click here. Hold down shift and control. Come to that line. Okay, now that looks like that goes somewhere and up to you, like I said, depends on the angle you want it to look like the audience is seeing it. I want it to look like they're looking up a little bit at it. So does that look right? Yeah, probably get away with that. So this would symbol that uh, this this being the roof would, would make it look like the audience was a little bit, the, the viewer was a little bit shorter so that they were looking up at the room a little bit so that they could see the top of the roof. Really, from the view that sort of someone in my height, sort of six foot bit, you probably wouldn't see the there. You, you'd probably, um, it would be a tighter angle. So you, you would see it and the ceiling would sort of be here. Still can't work out whether I like that more or not, but I think for... I'm just going to uh, re-include it. Uh, oops. Let's hold on. Oh, I'm going back and back and back. Hold on. Let's uh, come to my undo history. Let's give back my scene. Okay. Yep. So I undid it, but I've redone it. Uh, let's do that. Hmm. Yeah, well, it's up to you whether you want to include that or not. For the perspective I'm going for, I'm okay with that. I don't mind it too much. Now, remember, there's one more bit we need to do. You can use the lasso tool if you really want, or you can use the rubber. You can change the size of the rubber if you really want. Uh, but I'm just going to quickly go over it. This isn't the most precise way of doing it by any stretch of the imagination, but it works. Let's do that. Okay. Um, every time you let go, it records an action, by the way. So that things like that won't happen. You won't have to like, undo it again. Uh, right. So we've got our room in first point perspective. Now, if we just take a step back, look at it. It does look like we've got a corridor going off here, a corridor going off here. This sort of goes back a little bit. There's our back wall, side wall, side wall, roof floor. Excellent. Now what we can do is we can start to add some textures to this scene. All right, we can start to add them. What I mean by textures is, is paint the walls, paint the ceiling, make it look like it's a bit more lived in. <coughs> Excuse me. So make it feel like there's um, a lot more going on and it feels a bit more realistic. Okay, so we're going to use this sketch layer as our layer 
to help us uh, reference. Okay, so first one I'm going to call is walls. So I'm going to do a different layer for each just to make life a bit easier, but I'm going to layer one, two, three, four little walls. Um, I'm going to give them some colors and we can come back to our choices, start to have looks. So I've got purples, blacks, uh, things like that. Obviously, they would normally do a clinical sort of white color. Floor tends to be a, a shiny, a shiny sort of uh, black color normally as well, sort of a glossy finish. But I'm thinking my museum, I might do like a, um, a wooden textured floor. Now you've got two choices for getting textures really in my opinion obviously you can google it like you would normally uh, try and make sure you're using royalty free images if you can which means uh, there isn't a copyright on those images if you use it obviously you're not selling these games or anything like that so it doesn't really matter but uh, should you ever wish to sell games you definitely need to make sure you're using images you've created or royalty free images um, but i like having sort of i'm going to try this as a wallpaper it might be a bit heavy going but i'm going to try something like that but also a really good website that I like to use is textures.com. Okay, this is really good for my 3D modeling, but also this will work when we're creating scenes like this. You make an account, you can you get 15 credits free every single day, uh, which essentially if you download small images is, is 15 images a day. And at the size we need, uh, like 1024, uh, I think they come at 1024, 576, something like that, you, you, can, um, you can do a lot with it. So you, you would, you, you've got all the categories here. You can just type in what you'd like, like wood floor. Um, you can ignore these 4K uh, textures at the top, the circle ones. What you want to do is scroll down to these flat ones. These are the ones that you can get that aren't the premium ones. Uh, and then you've got these cool floors here. So like, for example, it was saying the corner seamless. And what that means, if I click on it, is it will seamlessly stitch together. So it's tileable. Now, if I zoom in and out, it shows it just goes on for infinity. So it means they line up perfectly and it looks like they just continue on and on and on. Uh, that's called seamless. So you can't see a seam. You can't see a join between where the two pictures have been put side by side. So these are really nice examples as well. You could use something like that. Um, and all you have to do, you can see it's one credit for 1024, 1024, a nice square one. So you can just simply download those uh, and they'll pop up for you. Okay, uh, it will download, it will go straight into your downloads and you've got it. Okay, so brilliant. That is the reference we could use. Now, how do I start to put those on the walls? That's the important thing. How do I start adding color to my walls and so on? And now um, we're going to do one layer for walls. Like I was talking about, we're going to do one for roof, and then we're going to do one for, let's see if we drop that. Oh, I didn't mean to do a folder, apologies, and one for floor. Now, if we were going to have any objects that were going to be completely static and that we didn't want to move, which realistically we would have, um, we could do that in this scene. But I'm going to use GIMP for as, as little as possible for the background. I'm going to go into Inkscape. The difference is that GIMP um, would be a vector. Um, GIMP would not be vector. It would be bitmap or raster graphic, depending on what you want to call it. And what that means is when you zoom in, you're able to see the pixels. Now, uh, any image like you've saved, so this will be saved out of GIMP. If you zoom in, you'll see the pixel starts to get blurry can't go in any further because you start to be able to see the squares it pixelates okay uh, that is an example of a bitmap or a raster whereas when i create things in inkscape that like illustrator is a vector based program so i will be able to create assets create things and zoom in into infinity so if i decide that i want uh, to make a, a, a globe over here like of the earth that's fine i draw it this size that's great now in gimp if i then save my file and then go and edit it and think oh i want to make that bigger actually and then i scale it up it will start to pixelate it won't be crisp anymore okay whereas if i were to do that in inkscape and then decide actually i want the earth to be this big and over this part of the screen all right that might look naff but it wouldn't lose any quality because it's stored mathematically okay it's stored in lines rather than pixels so that's why we're going to try and use inkscape because we're looking we're going for this sort of vector based graphic sort of scene that that's fine um that would work nicely for us so what we're going to do, uh, the first part we're going to do is the roof, and we'll do this quite simply for the roof. So what I can do um, is, so for my uh, roof, let's see. Uh, right, so if I select, hmm, I've gone to my sketching layer. So my layer was where, sketching layer was where I created all these lines. What I've done is I've used the magic wand tool, out of laziness really, but I've used the magic wand tool, which in this is called a fuzzy select tool. So it's magic wand in Photoshop, but that has selected for me 
these lines here that constitute as the roof. And what I want to do is give the roof a dark property so that people don't really look at it. So I'm going to go dark grey. I won't go full sort of black because I can't really add any, any detail to it. It's quite harsh, quite sharp. But what I'll do is I've selected a dark colour. I've selected my roof with the magic wand. I'm going to come to a paint bucket. I'm going to be quite lazy with the roof. Uh, and not on the sketching layer, sorry. I'm going to come to my roof layer. And I'm just going to paint bucket that, that colour on there. Okay. Now, the issue I might find here is basically, now if I come into view and uh, I want to select none, so I'll unselect it. That has coloured in the roof nicely for me. What will actually happen in the end though is those lines being five pixels thick, thick will actually then create a little bit of a... Um, a little bit of a section for me so the problem would be that I, I would have uh, when I get rid of this sketch I would still be able to see these lines uh, which isn't ideal now what I might do is move my sketch line to the top change the opacity of that down a little bit so opacity is how transparent something is so I might just change that down uh, so I can still see my room uh, over the top of everything but I can see those lines as well so I'm, I'm happy with with the roof color for now nothing too exciting but what I'm probably going to do um, is right so we go back onto our roof layer is create a little spotlight so if I come back to my concept let's close my character if I come back to my concept you can see these little sort of spotlights here are in in lines going along now what I'll do for those very simply is choose a white fill color I mean you can literally choose it or you can I just swap mine over because white was the background color um, which is which is useful okay and then what I want to do where am I going with this let's use my shape tool just gonna find where that is um, so the way um, it seems that we have to draw an ellipse anyway for my um, for my roof for those lights is that we're going to use the select tool and then fill it okay so if you, by the way if you ever get stuck press the um, forward slash uh, and you get search actions and then if you know the name of the tool you're looking for so for example I'm looking for the ellipse select tool I can then click on that and it will select the tool for me um, while I'm learning where tools are that's quite useful so I'm just going to create these slightly flatter circles for the ceiling there I've made sure my fill color is white and then I'll just go to edit fill with foreground color okay so I've created this sort of light here and now I'm going to try and keep these in line as best possible uh, with this but the the copy and paste whereas in uh, I would just hold alt and drag in in Photoshop or something like that it's a bit more primitive let's say in, in GIMP but nevertheless we can still do something so if I hold control and then V it will paste in place which means paste in top essentially and then what I can do is drag and I'll try and keep that in line so bear in mind I'm trying to make sure this orientates then if I control V again we will need to put this all in the same layer at the end but what I'm going to try and do is just uh, control paste that's oh, rubbish. I don't go back. Okay. So we're creating this sort of um, spotlight look. So I'm just control pasting it, Con uh, copy and pasting it every time. So I'm trying to keep it looking like it's going at an angle. Um, as I keep accidentally clicking off of it. Okay. So actually, in perspective, these would get closer together and they get smaller um, to make things look like it was further away, um, which would be sensible. So if I were to come in and use tools, transform, uh, scale, which apparently is shift and S, and then I were to scale that fractionally. So let's say, hold on, let's go back, let's scale this down to, uh, we don't want to increment it too much, but let's say, let's go down to 24, 
22. Okay, those should be linked anyway. So that's cool. And then let's scale that. It's probably a bit of a jump. I should have been doing this for everyone. So I would recommend for you guys that you do that. Uh, and let's control paste that. Okay. Nice. Uh, and then I can shift S to scale that. So let's go down again to, let's say, 19 for that one. Uh, let's scale that. Control paste. Uh, cool. And then let's move to that. So M is our shortcut. OK. It would look better if I had started uh, scaling it sooner, but it will start to give a perspective of depth that will look a little bit more like it's um, getting further away from us. All right, so there's that kind of effect. So it should start to get smaller there and so on. Uh, you get the idea for that. Okay, now I'm just going to do the same on the other side. Really, I should probably do one down the middle as well but uh, for the interest of time I'm not going to this one I probably will remember probably to um, correct the scale every time we'll see uh, right control V M to move getting used to these shortcuts a bit more than my beloved Adobe ones Right, there you go. So control V. Now let's start to scale those a little bit. Control S. He says shift S. Whoops. Oh, that's a good reminder actually. I haven't saved in ages. I do promote people saving regularly and uh, seem to have forgotten myself. So that's poor. Okay, so after I've finished these, I will try and remember to save. I'm on a roll at the moment. So let's do that. Control S, let's change it down again. Okay. Control C, Control V. Oops. Okay, that's fine. M, I don't want the scale tool. C, control V, make sure that move tool. These aren't perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but um, not too bad. Right, let's go a bit bigger. Reset. Oh, 23. Reset. Yeah, that's fine. Um, Good. I'm intrigued whether this works or not. It might not work. Let's double click. He says, All right, let's. Okay, I don't want that. I'm just going to try. Hold on. No, it didn't work. It just. In fact, that's also flattened that layer for me, which I didn't want. So it's anchored it. Uh, floating. Yeah, there you go. Right. So. I'm still on this one. I've come back thanks to my handy undo. I was just going to see if I could highlight that and move it. I must admit, being a noob to GIMP, I don't know how to do that. I'm sure someone will be able to tell me. It would be very straightforward in Photoshop, that's for sure. Control Shift. Let's change it down to 20. Okay. Let's do a couple more. It's getting slightly tedious now, I'm sure. Oh, I forgot to press move. Move. Okay, right, let's drastically change this one down. Let's go 15 scale. As we're getting further away, control C, control V, M, and then control uh, shift S, 10, done, scale. 
happy days. Right, that line's whoops, it's a bit wobbly wibbly, but that's fine. Now, if you've still got that layer floating, which mine is, you right click, anchor layer, and it says, okay, I'm happy with that. Let's move it into that scene. So, um, yeah, we've got sort of a couple of rows of spotlights at the moment. Some depth to our roof. Not perfect. This one's more of a circle. This one goes a bit wobbly, although that one works all right. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is start to try and add some textures. All right. So let's have a look. So if I come to my walls layer, uh, let's file. Okay. And then what we're going to start to do, uh, actually, what we're going to start to do uh, is copy and paste in some pictures um, or some textures. I apologize. So if I were to come into the folder where I've selected before, let's have a look. See. So if I were to make this wall like a space wall, let's say, just dragged and dropped it onto my scene. It's a space wallpaper. It's coming on its own. Okay. So what I want to do is edit this because I'm not exactly happy with that. So what I'm going to do is come up to tools, transform tools. Uh, let's scale it down first and foremost. So with the scale tool, if I hold alt, it will uniform scale it. If I hold control, it will uniform scale it in the middle of the screen. Okay. And then if I hold shift, it won't really do anything, but uh, I'm just going to uniform scale for now. I'm going to use my move tool. We're going to try and line this up. Uh, so that it looks like it's going along this wall. So we're going to skew it. Okay. Now I've got my sketching layer over the top so I can have an idea. I want to make sure that I cover over these lines so I don't have the lines uh, showing it in. So when I hide this layer, there isn't any like white um, sections that, that were hidden under the, under the line. So if I come back in, uh, I use my transform tool. Now I would normally use my skew. Uh, if I were doing um, in Photoshop or whatever, but let's, let's see what perspective does. Okay, so perspective seems to do the same thing. So if I drag these corners over, there we go. So you can see the perspective has changed on that image to make it look like it's actually stuck to that wall which is fine. Okay. Now I can come back in and edit this again in a sec. Just trying to make sure I cover over those lines. Okay. So that feels a little bit more like it's actually stuck to that wall, um, which is great. So I can just uh, accept that by pressing enter. And that's great. That that now looks like a, a texture stuck onto that wall. If I just hide my sketch layer, yeah. So you can see that it touches both one to the other. Happy enough with that. Obviously, it's quite simple at the moment. I can add a bit more detail to it in a bit, but I'm quite happy with that. Now, the bit I'm not happy with is obviously the fact that it also covers the floor area here, it also covers the side wall here, which I wouldn't necessarily want to be the same colour. And certainly if it was going to be the same color, it, it would be darker um, because this would be in shadow because the light wouldn't bounce us the same. And then uh, the roof here certainly wouldn't be the same color. So what I'm going to need to do is come into my sketching layer. I'm going to use my magic wand tool again. And I'm going to select one, two, three layers. I could select like so. Also, I'm going to hold shift because my issue now is that it hasn't selected the lines and I'm going to uh, holding shift. You can see the little plus arrow next to my lasso. I'm going to add that to my selection. I'm also going to add this line to my selection. You'll see why in a minute. He says, come to space wallpaper delete that's cool now let's okay edit um, sorry view none didn't seem to let me add the second line so let's also get rid of 
that line there. Delete, because I was still on space wallpaper layer. View, uh, select, uh, none, which is shift control A. So we could start making the shortcuts. Okay, brilliant. Okay, let's uh, go to uh, make sure we've got nothing selected. No, we haven't. Brilliant. Okay, so we've made that wallpaper. Our doorway is still there. Um, not so bad. Obviously, I can see it overhangs a little bit here, but once I add the wallpaper onto the back wall, we should should be doing okay. Okay, so let's see what else I, I've added so far in my texture. So I've got these two wooden floor sort of areas here. Um, and if I look at my reference, you've kind of got this sort of nice purpley gradient that we'll probably try and use. Um, these sort of light purples, it tends to be quite a popular color for space. Okay, so we might might use something like that for, for these walls here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use my rectangle select tool rather than my ellipse or anything like that. I'm going to select these walls, this back wall. Okay, now I will merge these in a minute, um, but if I'm just on the wall layer. Now, this time I'm probably going to add um, a bit of depth to my scene. Okay, so I'm going to make it feel a little bit more like there's, um, rather than using a flat color, I'm going to make it feel like there's a little bit sort of going on. So what I'll do is I'll go to, uh, let's have a look. Paintbrush tool, oh, no, paint, uh, paint bucket tool, gradient tool. Okay, and I will use, okay, let's use a dark purple, other color, so we need both colors selected. Let's use a lighter purple. Perfect. And now if we drag that in, you can see we've started to make sort of like a gradient. Now, the reason I'm using a gradient is because I don't really like a flat color because it feels a little bit. I know we're going for a vector, but it feels a little bit too deep. So I haven't let go of it yet. I'm, it feels a little flat, sorry, uh, one color. So what I'm doing is just trying to find where I think that looks best. I can, if I'm concerned, change this other color up a little bit. So it's something a bit paler. Now the two colors, there's a bit of a difference in them. Something along those lines. Okay. So, uh, what was it? Shift control. Uh, let's try and remember the shortcut for unselect. So shift control and A. Shift control A. Unse wow. Wow. <laughs> Also, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, now, oh, delete the back wall as well, silly boy. Right, rectangle select. Oh, because I never selected it. I never actually pressed on it. Right, so let's, I'm happy with that. Shift control A. Didn't want that. Okay. Rectangle select. Done. Let's accept that. Happy days. Let's come back to my rectangle select tool. Let's choose this back wall now another little corridor now this i want it to look like this color sort of continuing but also i want this to look like it's in shadow a little bit so what i might do here is actually repeat this pattern but repeat it so that it looks like uh, it's coming from dark to light again but we'll see how that looks and then we can make it darker if we need to so Let's come across here. That's nice like that. Excellent. And then for our next wall, let's come on to sketching. So we've chosen this wall here. Okay, happy days. Let's now the, the danger obviously here is that if I if I now choose to um, just uh, fill this part of the wall, which is good because obviously it doesn't fill here, I'm not going to include these five pixel width lines, uh, and that will create that rubbish white area that we're not looking for. Okay, so we need to we need to sort that one out. 
Now the way I'm going to get around this is by going um, to, to grow this selection. Um, and basically what that's going to do is say I want this selection to get bigger. Now my issue obviously is that the selection only reaches out so far as the line. Um, but hold on, let's zoom in a little bit. Whoa. Um, so let's turn the sketch off for a sec. Yeah, I might need to erase that, but we'll see. Um, so my issue here is obviously that it's not covering over the line. So if I go up to select grow and I'm going to choose grow by five pixels, it will bear in mind my, I've chosen five pixels to my brush was five pixels wide. It will cover over those lines perfectly for me. So let's change that back so I can see everything. Okay, I've still got my gradient colors, but this time I'm going to change it round. So I'm going to change from light to dark because the light's here. And I'm going to try and follow that pattern a little bit. Oh no, I'm on sketching layer. Whoops. Let's go into walls layer. Let's choose that. Okay, excellent. So that follows suit. Now, I probably could have chose some different colors here, um, made it slightly more interesting. But for me, that's working out okay. Um, with that in mind, I might come back in because if you notice, like I just did, I actually didn't get that one bang on at all. Um, so if I come into Sketch and turn that on, Magic One that, I'm going to integrate. Sorry, I'll have to jump on Discord and say, uh, if I go grow, okay, five, uh, let's choose my gradient tool again. Uh, let's possibly, if we go from dark to light, see what that looks like. Oh, I'm on sketching there, but bad form. Um, so let's grow selection, make sure that's on walls. Let's go from light to dark. Shift control A to unselect. Did that every bloody time, didn't I? Um, so grow selection. Let's just see where I like that. Okay. So I'm happy with that. Let's have a look. So looking good. So if I want to make my space wallpaper when I'm here, part of the walls, if I just go to space wallpaper, merge down. That's cool. That should work nice like that. Um, let's Let's just have a quick look. So we've got to do the floor, we've got to do the walls, uh, and then we can talk about possibly adding like a texture to something, okay? Now, um, like to the ceiling. So it's a bit flat at the moment, but what I might do is, um, not necessarily because it would look the best, but just, just to show you how to um, add uh, blending modes like we would have done in Photoshop and what well, we have done in Photoshop before but we'll, we'll add some blending modes before but uh, what I'm going to do is create these sort of the corridor colors um, make sure I fill those so if I come to I'm gonna call these roof I'm gonna do the roof parts for now so sorry if I make sure I'm on the sketching layer let's choose that and that let's do these little roofs remember select we're going to grow that selection by five pixels because how big my brush was. So I'm just going to color in those sections. Uh, I'm going to choose my paint bucket this time. My foreground color is going to be like a, a dark, dark color. Make sure I'm on roof. That's fine like that. If I turn sketching off. Cool. Okay. There is a possibility that that should come all the way to the corner and doesn't. Oh, so uh, let's oh, control A. Let's use my paintbrush just to, um, if I drop roof below wall, hmm, above wall. If you look at my space wall there, 
that creates an issue. Okay, so what I'll do, just tidy that up a little bit. Oops. That's fine. Let's, so I'm just using my brush tool. Okay, that tidies that up a little bit and all I'm doing is I'm clicking in the corner because the selection didn't quite get all the way to the corner and I'm holding shift and control to get my straight line there we go. that's cool okay so that's sort of the roof bit at the moment that doesn't really show because um, because of my um, selection so now if we go to sketching Let's choose this area here, the wall. So that's fine. Let's do a sketch in just see. Okay, so actually I might make these walls slightly different colours. So if I go um, let's think about this. So if I grow this, I don't want to grow this one actually. Let's use my selection tool and that's fine there. This is my selection. If I do want to change the selection, by the way, you can just click on the side of these boxes if you want to go up or down with it. Um, should you wish to use once you've used the selection tool. But let's. Sorry, I did it by accident. There you go. So that's my selection. So this is going to be the side wall color of that corridor. So again, I might use a gradient on this one actually. So we probably want, let's go, let's assume if we're going from space into science, science will be more of a sort of a white clinical color. Probably we'll do something a bit more space age on the walls. Uh, and then if I come down into like a cream. So we might actually it's more of, let's go for more of a blue. That's it. So we're going to use these two colors. Let's choose a gradient. We'll see how that looks. I can always change that. It probably looks naff, but okay, that's all right. Not too bad. It's definitely a different wall, isn't it? So um, that's fine. In fact, the white color I might change for a very pale blue. So there's at least something in there. Cool. Uh, let's see what that looks like. Oh, I've done it on the wrong layer as per usual. Walls, you're probably screaming at the screen saying, Giles, you're in the wrong layer again, mate. There you go, that's nice, that's a bit brighter. That's why I wasn't getting much out of it. Uh, let's do the same on this wall. So make sure we're going to sketching layer. Because that's that, it's got my lines on it. Let's come into my selection tool. Make sure I've got the wall selected. Turn off the lights for a second so I can see what I'm working with. And that's cool. So I want to bring it to that wall there. Uh, and this we can make up wherever this one comes from. So let's say this came from like um, some kind of sort of forest area. Um, so. See what that looks like. Might look naff. Make sure I'm on the walls layer. Uh, probably needs a darker colour. Look at that. Yeah, I think that's a bit too, a bit too bright. We probably need to go darker. That's cool. Yeah. So there you go. I'm starting to get like a shadowy sort of look, like it's going away. That looks good. This one, I reckon I could probably get away with even darker on there. Cool. So we're starting to look like we're in the light. Nice. Okay, that's cool. Now just for the floor. So if I come back into my sketching layer, turn that on, we will select our floor layer. Cool. So 
probably pretty good apart from I might actually grow this one yeah so select grow five pixels so it's going to take over this wall so it's going to go over a little bit of the stuff I've done so far which is fine I will have to probably correct this area make it a little bit darker but we'll do that in a bit we'll see what this looks like when I add in a floor texture so where do I save my floor texture ba, 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 ba. that was saved textures let's drag and drop that in brilliant okay so I'm quite happy with that now depending on uh, the scene itself will depend on um, how good this necessarily looks at this scale but what I can do so I know I'd select my background before I've done all this but um, we can always make that selection again so if I come in and I choose transform and I choose scale oh yeah shift control a let's make sure I now scale this down like that might work okay so my room is a little bit wider than it is long so what I can do control C control V move it across let's hold shift to make sure I line it up so this is a tileable texture so as long as I put those together perfectly with no seam we should now if I anchor that hopefully there next to it. yeah you should get a seamless texture so it looks like it continues on and what we're going to do with this we'll see what it looks like now I might need to add two onto here uh, just to make it look a bit nicer but we'll work that one out in a minute so what I can do actually is I'm going to duplicate this layer um, oops I'm going to duplicate this layer famous last words where was that again there it was I'm going to hide it for a sec I'm going to just work on this layer for now which is eventually going to become the floor uh, and same as we did before with the walls we're going to come up into tools transform perspective uh, and we're going to try and match our perspective a little bit first so like that we won't worry too much about this wall yet we'll try and match that up in a minute because you can just come through there but we'll, we'll work that out in a sec what what's going to look best for that okay so let's match that up down there let's bring this there okay might need to zoom out a little bit for this we're following those lines of the walls that's the most important part is that we follow the lines of the walls okay so yes we need to keep that straight let's follow the lines of the walls now that to me looks pretty good and the reason we duplicate it is because we're going to use that other duplication part there for that section um, okay now what I'll probably do is accept that so those are there and that's the tool cool now that'll accept my changes looking good okay let's turn this one on okay so we're gonna pop that there let's zoom in again so we know what we're doing let's go to 100 this time let's go tools transform perspective apparently shift p will help us with that but we're good okay oh, that's frustrating that it's under there so if i can just click there okay obviously we're going to need that to be in a straight line let's make sure they look flush as do they okay let's do that and follow the line of the wall make sure it's in a straight line there so it comes to about there obviously we're going to cut that off anyway about here 
but it's just so that it looks like it continues down that corridor. We are going to have to do similar for here, but we'll do that in a second. Okay, so happy enough with that. So once we're happy, I can just hit enter and it will accept it for me. Now I could use that if I control C, control V, use my move tool, could potentially use that here. I think it was shift P, was it? Yep. And I could, uh, let's zoom right back out again. 50, could potentially use that there. Although we're risking double warping it now, but um, we'll see how this looks. I can always change this afterwards. It isn't the end of the world. In fact, I probably will because now I'm warping something that's already warped. Yeah, let's not worry about that. Okay, first and foremost, let's cut that out. So shift control A. No, let's accept that. Move tool. Accept. Delete. Cool. Right, let's zoom in a little bit. So it's come to 50. I will now, uh, what I'll do is drop in that texture again. Shift P. You want to try and keep it, if possible, at the same sort of size uh, panel. So obviously these ones are really stretched, so it probably needs to come to about there and there and there. I know this doesn't look like it's following at all, or we, but once we cut it out, it will look right. So what we'll do is. I mean, it's quite neat. It could be better. So you just got to make sure you're following that line. That's all. Okay, good. Happy enough with that. And then I will repeat the same on the other side. So if I accept that. Let's see if we can. Uh, right, let's see. Selection. I wonder if I can mirror that. Sorry, transform. Um, we'll move, crop, rotate. Sorry, I will jump on Discord in a sec. Uh, flip. Perfect. Okay, I will need to correct it a little bit, but we're just practicing some of the tools. So if we Let's make sure we keep that in line there. So, just got to change that, warp that perspective a tiny bit. Uh, let's change that there. And uh, shift P. Let's make sure we're following the lines of the wall. Cool. Enter. Right, and now what we can do, so if I anchor that layer, now all those wood layers are done, I can, right, I can choose merge down, merge down. So that's all merged into one layer, which is technically the floor layer. And now what I can do, like we did before, so if I hide that for a sec, use my magic wand tool, fuzzy tool, whatever it's called in this. Remember how we did it before, so select, grow, five pixels, Turn on this layer, make sure I'm working on this layer. Now, if I were to press delete now, it would delete everything inside the selection. That is definitely not what I want to do. So what I need to do is select invert, which means it's inverting my selection. So now it's selecting everything outside of that selection. Now, if you watch when I hit delete, it will delete everything that was outside of that selection. Okay, so let's unselect, perfect. That has created a really nice floor for my room, so it looks much more believable. Let's turn off the sketching. A little bit of work to do there. I have a texture up here, but you can see we're starting to feel like we've got some depth to our scene. Okay, now we can 
right, so let's come onto our roof layer. Let's paint drop us. I'll make sure I'm working with that color. Let's choose paintbrush. Let's click in this corner here. Okay. And let's click there. There you go. Uh, it didn't quite cover it. I must have got the angle slightly wrong. There you go. So I've just covered that gap a little bit there. That wall is a little bright. Maybe let's change the opacity. Nope, not quite. So obviously it's white on the bottom level. If I wanted to make things darker, the opacity obviously is becoming transparent. So if the transparent, the layer underneath. So if I made this fully transparent to zero, it would just become white because the bottom layer is white. Um, obviously I can't make the bottom one zero, but if I make this uh, zero, you see the white would come through. If I made this layer darker, obviously it's the one that had the dot on it, but if I made this layer darker um, with my paintbrush tool, with my gradient, uh, with my bucket tool, got there in the end. So if I made this layer darker and then I made the walls slightly more transparent, you can see that sort of gray comes through a little bit because it's gray underneath. Okay, so we can Play around with that if you did want. I just want to add a little bit of texture to the ceiling to make it feel a little bit more alive. And what I might also do is use those sketching layers, um, but make them feel a little bit more like they're um, make them feel a little bit more like they are part of the scene. So I've just paint dropped them for now, so they became dark. Um, uh, and I'll show you in a minute what we're going to do with blending modes, but I'll show you for the roof first. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to be working on, let's just combine those two layers. So my floor, I'm happy with, I'll merge it down, it becomes my floor layer. Um, with that in mind, I now want to make sure I've selected um, my roof. Uh, I downloaded an image earlier, so which when I was demonstrating at the start, I downloaded that wood image. I'll probably just use that um, as my, just to add some ceiling texture. I'm not sure it's gonna to be totally right, but I just want to add a texture to it just quickly, okay? So if I drag that into my scene, uh, convert, it's fine. Um, that's fine. So what I'm going to do for this texture, right, is, Shift P for perspective. I'm going to make it the size of my ceiling. It obviously doesn't matter too much if it overhangs because I can cut it out just like we did before. So let's choose there. Let's choose there. Let's make sure this carries on. So that should come to there, which means that needs to come to there. Cool, that's good. Try and keep that in a straight line so that the pattern follows itself. And I know it, these are wood patterns, so they would be totally irrelevant. And, and there is a reason that I've chosen uh, a pattern that wouldn't necessarily work. Obviously, we're just supposed to look tile, but you, you'll see how we're going to integrate this into the roof in a minute to, to make it feel a little bit more like it's three dimensional. Um, so I'm just going to accept that as I've done before. Come into my sketching layer. Uh, let's just get rid of that for a sec. Let's choose my ceiling. Let's. Uh, that's okay. That's okay. Actually, what I might do for this one is cheat. I might select my roof. So I've clicked on the roof color. That's fine. Uh, rather than my sketch this time. So I select my roof color. Let's come back in here. Remember, I don't want to just delete. Um, what I've got I want to invert it. So the reason that I chose my roof layer and selected is because I don't want to put this texture over the lights. It's quite important actually. I don't want to texture the lights. So what I'm going to do, you can see it's, it's also selected lights. That's why I didn't just select sketch layer, I selected roof and click. So it selected the black of the roof, but it didn't select the white. What I'm going to do now is select invert. So it selects everything outside of it. Make sure I've got my wooden texture and press delete. So now all I've done is made it look like I've got wood panelling on my ceiling. It's quite fun actually, but that's not the look I'm going for. This is the look I'm going for. So what I can do, I've got these blend modes here, and 
in Photoshop, we've got some great ones, multiply and overlay and so on. So let's have a look. I've never used these in here before, but let's use our blend modes to see what I can get. So screen, that's made it lighter. Overlay, that's normally a good one. Overlay is one of my favorites. Multiply, overlay are normally my go-tos. Okay, so I've got multiply. Multiply, that's pretty good. We'll change the opacity with it as well. So a soft light as well. Let's see what a soft light does. Now, the, you have to combine this with a change in opacity as well. So what we're trying to do is change it down so you can see the color that the roof was underneath. But also you can see the texture coming through. So it feels a little bit more believable. So let's change this to something like 20. He said, whoops, he says, famous last words. Uh, all right, that's fiddly. Let's change that to 20. 90.5, that would do for now. Just have a quick look, see a few other options. Obviously, you're welcome to play around, see if any of these work perfectly for you. And like I say, multiply and overlay are normally my go-tos. Multiply doesn't quite work for this one, it's too dark. Overlay will make it brighter, which I quite like, but a nice pin light. Or soft light it does work. I might turn it up a little bit. There you go. So about 30. About 30 seems to work. Uh, and what I can do if I would like to darken it up a bit, obviously, is come in to my roof layer because we're not working on that and you know hit paint bucket and darken it up if I really wanted to. Or vice versa, I can lighten it up. And have a look what that looks like but let's, let's revert back to like a darkish gray okay cool now what i could then do is go in i mean if i'm an inkscape i'm adding a drop shadow to all these lights that so feels like there's actually something there or a surround or so on um so you know like a darker circle around the edge like an inner glow which is what really i should have done on on each and every one of these circles um but obviously i didn't so that's fine but instead what i could retroactively do is i can select them all so what essentially i'm going to do is i'm, I'm happy with the lights ish but they do look like flat circles on a ceiling now i mean this wall looks flat as well being that it's texture but i'm going to add objects in front of it and that which will help uh, the room feel a bit more alive. This really is just the base. Uh, so let's right, let's make sure I'm just selecting circles here. So if I do this side for now, show you what I'm talking about. Make sure I don't accidentally click on the background. Right, so what I'll do, let's change this to, oh yeah, I've kind of got a greyish color already. So if I change all those, like so, okay, right. let's just do this easy way, edit, fill with foreground color. Then what I can do is come into select and rather than grow, I can shrink. Uh, let's see, I shrink by one pixel, see what I get. Might not be quite enough, so let's shrink by another pixel. So that would be two pixels. Uh, and let's see what this looks like. Then I'm gonna create the white. So what I've done by making it darker is create like um, a rim to the light, hopefully. So select uh, and sorry, edit fill foreground color shift. A, that's a little bit. Uh, yeah, it's not so bad. Okay, just feels a little bit more realistic. Uh, I might I might go back there to when I had it all selected. Make the edges much darker. Probably too dark actually. Make them a dark color uh, fill the foregrounds and then edit shrink select shrink or we'll get the hang of where they hide everything in this program uh, and then change my color to a whitish actually let's go for like a whitish yellow no let's go for white clinical white lights why not right so we go for white uh, then the foreground color. So what that looks like. Pretty 
gradient to the pixels quite enough. Right, so select shrink to. Mm. Maybe they mold into the background a little bit too much. I mean, it's all trial and error, obviously, but um, yeah, that's that's quite. That's, well, I'm not going to say okay. It is it's okay at best. Uh, so let's do the same for this side just quickly. So we're not left with unsymmetrical lights. We don't want that. So just making sure I don't accidentally click on the background. Obviously, if you're watching this through for the first time and you're not doing it along with me, that this will be great because you can avoid any of the mistakes I make. Obviously, I'm inventing and designing this as a go, which is a bit different. Obviously, most of you will have um, pre-designed your screens hopefully you know exactly what it is you want to do for it so you'll have a much clearer idea whenever I design something that I've already designed uh, on paper or, or in my mind or on the computer like on Photoshop I've done a sketch up I find it so much easier and so much quicker um, so I really do recommend having pre-designed stuff uh, however I'm not practicing what I preach uh, and I am winging it and the results are varied Okay, cool. And then last but not least, I did say about keeping those sketching lines. So let's have a look. If we bring them back to 100, we've got the clear lines on the outside. Doesn't quite work there, does it? But um, if I now, hold on, actually, let's turn the wall off. No, fine. Uh, right, if I were to have a look, let's say you were looking here, so you could multiply the wall, they get dark. Looks quite cool though. Um, cell shade uh, overlay. No, it overlays using the colour below it, which doesn't work. Um, obviously, we'll change the opacity as well, so this will look a bit cleaner. Uh, try screen. That's also a good one. Mm, it's made it too light. Um, pin light. No. I'm sure I pressed on pin light, not vivid. Uh, right. Five mix. Just mixing the colours. Uh, it's just a chance for you to play around with it really but let's turn that right down so i'm only really now trying to emphasize corners and things like that in the room by uh making it look like there's a bit of shadow or something there okay so something like that's fine it was really most useful there in the corner so there we have it we've got sort of our base of our room the corridors don't really work, um, but that's fine. In fact, uh, what I'm going to do just before I leave this part of the tutorial is gradient. Uh, we're going to have to go a lot darker with these colours because we're trying to make it look like um, it goes into another room, the science room, but it should be in shadow because the main <clears throat> the main light won't be hitting hitting the room. So let's try something along those lines. Um, let's see what that looks like. I could probably make that a lot darker. So I'm trying to make it look like it's this colour but this colour in shadow so if I come to the darker part of it. Something like that might work. And then I do it like that because I'm just thinking about how the light would be hitting it, what angle it would be hitting it at. That's cool. Okay, we'll go with that. Happy days. Control Shift A. Oh, keep doing that. Don't press Control Shift A when you do it. I've learnt my lesson now. Blimey. Frustrating. Okay. There are lots of uh, fiddly bugs with um, GIMP that I am finding all out about. So, let's call. I'm happy enough with that. Okay, so we click off of it, it accepts it. Right, so what I'm going to do now is save this background. So I never actually ended up saving the scene either, did I? That was 
dangerous. I'm very lucky my machine didn't crash. So let's call this scene one base. And it would be useful if I create a folder in here called scene one. That way any assets for my scene can be stored in here for my first scene. Um, make sure I'm storing it in there. It just makes everything a bit cleaner and tidier. So I've got a bit of a textured roof. Mm, probably could have textured the walls. Should I texture them? Yes, I probably will quickly. So uh, you could just plaster. Um, I'm just thinking about adding like a grain to the walls. Uh, okay, this is more of a caustic for a, an ocean or something, but for a sea. That's all right. Let's do that. Happy days. Let's copy that from my downloads into my textures for this game. Um, obviously, this is the joy of uh, of winging it as I go. I'm uh, deciding on the spot what I'm doing, and what I will do. Yes, we do want to convert it to an RGB working space. Though, have I crashed it? Ah, cool. Um, Right, so actually that was quite neat without me even having to edit it. That was quite handy. Uh, right, so I'm going to scale it. I was thinking about warping it, distorting it, like I said before, uh, to make it fit the walls and stuff. But um, I seem to have an issue here. Hold on. Uh, but it may work. It seems to have frozen. Entirely sure why. Right. Let's uh, so control A, make sure nothing's selected. Let's use my move tool. Moves fine. There you go. It just wasn't playing ball for some reason. Right. So, something along those lines, that'll be fine. Uh, we'll see how it looks. I might have to. Yeah, it's not so bad. Um, let's, yeah, it's probably going to work on there as well. Okay, right, let's make it big enough so it fits the screen. Uh, and, whoops, and he says not making it big enough to fit the screen. Uh, let's do that. Okay, right, let's hide that layer, except let's move on to another layer. Go away walls so uh, let's select our wall layers let's select okay let's do it the hard way select 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 let's um, grow my selection let's have that in mind yeah, I never merged that down, did I? That was one thing I should have done. So let's select. Actually, hold on. Right. Oh, control A, unselect everything. Let's control A, select everything. Let's minus this it. I can minus select the roof. I can control to minus select the floor. That has selected everything else that isn't classed as roof or floor, so possibly those roofs as well. That's it. So I've selected everything that I want that is wall. I'm going to come into my texture, which I will now bring above my walls. I will go to select, invert. I'll hit my delete key. That's fine. So that's now selected the walls. Uh, let's all control undo. Why is that not selected the wall? Hold on, let's go back to a time before I didn't delete it. Let's move it above the walls. Ah, I see. Yeah, I'd obviously hit by accident. Uh, right, got to go into my history. Back 
towards not fuzzy select. Let's go into IT visibility. Right, I'm coming right back to where I moved it here before I made any changes. Right, let's do it again. Let's explain a little bit better about what I'm doing. So let's warp this so that it's the size of the screen uh, so that it fits across everything. Okay, happy days. Let's hide that for a second. Let's um, press Control and A to select everything. So everything in my scene is selected. Let's actually let's make sure that, that is merged as part of it. So let's now select my roof because I don't want my roof to be textured. Okay, and I'm going to hold. Uh, I'm going to go magic wand. I'm going to hold Control. Okay, he says. Let's get that out for a sec. Right, let's select everything. Cool. Okay, let's now. I want that. What's happening? Oh, there you go. Control. Ooh, don't know what's happening there. Right, unselect the roof. And that roof. And that roof. Unselect the floor. So I'm holding control. Okay, I had to click and drag then for some reason, which doesn't make total sense, but hey ho. Uh, and now I'm going to bring this layer above the walls. I'm going to select, invert, delete. That has deleted everything that doesn't exist. Um, it's deleted everything that wasn't selected, everything. So I can control A. Now on this layer that I want to, I'm only going to make this very faint just to add it as a texture. So let's see if I were to change that to maybe 10, you can already see what it would do. That's just the opacity I've changed. Uh, I really like that crack down the wall. That looks fun. So it's adding some depth to those flat colors already. Um, wonder if I changed so that it maybe is merge color or let's overlay it. No, overlay didn't do a lot. Multiply is normally a good one at this stage. Don't know that I need one. Okay, let's try normal. I like it for all these walls. I just don't like it for this wall. So what I might do is I've got my um, selection tool. Just holding. I'm just clicking rather than clicking and dragging. I'm just going to click, click. Obviously, I left this bit as well, so I had to do this thinking about it. But it ruins the space, or it doesn't ruin anything else. So double click, that makes all that selection. Hit delete, and there you go. So it won't apply the texture to that part. Will, however, apply a little bit to the ceiling by accident, which I don't want. So let's just do that. Delete, that's better. That's better. Okay, whoops, I press Control D, which duplicates the screen. Let's just make sure that I've saved that version. Discard. So Control D in Photoshop is uh, to unselect, but in this you have to press Control Shift A. What it seems to do, Control D, is duplicate your screen, which is not what I wanted to do. I really like that crack down the wall. That's worked out quite well with the core sticks. Uh, so yeah, we've got some depth to our scene now. Um, if you really, really want to sort of go into a little bit more detail, what you can do, uh, what you might want to do as well is sort of add um, a little bit more. Um, so we'll create a new uh, layer, not a new layer, great new layer. We call it shadow, uh, just so it doesn't feel as flat. You could potentially do this in um, Inkscape afterwards once you know what's going on. But what you can do here, say, is let's create a little bit flax is not shadowing anything once we had objects obviously we want to create shadow for that but what i would do is create like a grayish sort of shadow 
uh, use your paint bucket tool. Obviously, we're going to have to change the opacity because it's going to be way too bright. We need to add it above the floor. Uh, probably needs to come out a little bit more than that as well, but that's. Uh, yeah, no, that's okay. Uh, and then um, let's use this. Probably where multiply will be useful. Okay, there you go. Way too bright, but that's fine. So change it down to 25. We'll apparently leave it at 125. Yeah, 25,000. That's what I was going for. 25. There you go. You're starting to get a little bit of shadow in there. 30. Uh, 50. Nice. Okay. Makes it feel a little bit more like it's a uh, different part of the room. I'm not doing it right on there because some of the light from the ceiling would get to that point, but the shadow would be set back a little bit. It wouldn't be directly on the line, but um, so let's do that. Let's do exactly the same. And obviously because we're on the shadow layer, I don't need to change it around anymore. Perfect. Whoops. I make that mistake every time. Okay. That's, whoops, that's cool. Um, and then I'll probably do the same for this back section here. Just so we know that it's sort of in a bit of shadow. But I might do it. I might do like a little triangle of shadow there. So, oh, I'll press G because that's bucket in Photoshop. I will get used to these. Cool. Okay, and then in my shadow layer... I might come to filter because we haven't used filters yet. I might blur those a little bit because the shadows aren't that crisp. Um, let's see what 1.5 looks like. How we could ramp that right up. Ooh, just keeps ramping up. Um, probably too much. So. just doing the one I've got selected I forgot to unselect that okay so let's make sure we do it for the whole layer filters blur Gaussian blur is a good one uh, let's change this up to 10 uh, so you can see now because we've got preview on what it's doing that is probably blurring too much so you can see that's nicer so that we haven't got that the clean edge now we want like a, a, a blur like we don't want that that's that's too crisp for a shadow but we do want something so like there perfect okay so about six let's just round that off and call it let's call it six thousand yeah let's call let's call that i will get used to this i think i'm telling myself to convince myself more than anything uh it's uh what is it what is it oh, he says uh, Perfect. Okay. Nice. So a bit of detail there. That's fine. And if you want to, you could add some around the trim of the room. Uh, you could add some in the corner there. Remember, obviously, once we go into um, Inkscape after this, we're able to add all of our shadows and everything to that layer afterwards as well. Um, it's not, we're not finished necessarily with this scene or anything like that. We're just, just creating like a real base layer for it. Uh, so this will act as a background that we're putting stuff on top of. Uh, okay. Let's just quickly press on that. Okay, what, what have we got now then? Let's have a look. Cool, okay, so that is the room I'm going to start creating. So hopefully you're quite happy with what we've done. Yes, my color choices are horrendous, however, um, I think it looks quite fun. Hopefully by the time I get to the third room in Japan, I'll have an actual idea of what I'm doing and it'll look quite cool. So I can hide my dot layer. I don't necessarily need it. Obviously sketching layer I've actually integrated. So that's it without it. Looks quite nice, doesn't it? And that's it with it. Um, actually thinking I don't want it. I might turn my layer down. Oh yeah, I might turn it up. I might turn it right down. So it's just emphasized. just enough cool excellent right so that is now 
the scene that we're going to go with save I also want to make sure that I'm exporting a copy so uh, let's choose to save as um, right so probably save as PNG that's absolutely fine point and click scene one scene one base that's fine so let's export that uh, exports PNG save background color yep let's just check all that because I've not used the export in here before it's just doing it for me I will check that over that's good and then we'll go into Inkscape and we'll create an asset for it okay excellent let's just double check that over so let's come back out of there into scene one perfect okay so that's our background that we're going to be working on I mean actually let's just have a quick look those look horrible the lights probably shouldn't have messed around with those it certainly didn't work with the outlining but hey you live and learn okay cool excellent stuff so let's go into Inkscape okay so I've jumped into Inkscape here and what I'm going to do is bring my image in now if I just go to file open I did um, go back and save one as a JPEG as well if I wanted it. It doesn't really matter too much, but if you look at the file size of the two, the JPEG comes in much smaller, about a fifth of the size. Um, not a big deal. I'm just going to hit OK to that. Uh, and then I'm going to expand my window. I've got my Layers tab here. OK, so here's my finished image. Remember, Control and Mouse wheel to go in. Control and Hold Mouse wheel down to pan around. It isn't perfect. But it's going to do for what we're going to use it for okay so i'm quite happy um to to make something here so what i'm going to start doing is creating some assets okay and the reason like i said is i'm creating them in inkscape so they're vector based i can use the same um horizon lines and things like that if i want to to sort of try and help me out a little bit here um but what i'll do is create a new layer i'll just call this my uh, vanishing point spell it completely wrong uh, I'll put that there and on that layer let's make myself a nice circle uh, let's make it red so I can see it so probably my vanishing point was about there so just for now that's why I'm gonna like try and make everything go to that vanishing point now obviously I've got the same thing I can do again with guides and things like that if I want um, right at this stage though I'm happy with my vanishing point being where it is okay so probably could even go a little bit higher but yeah okay so we're going to draw all of our assets so that they point towards this object here now they're going to look like they sit in the scene and, and really the drop shadow that we add on to a lot of these objects is going to be the most important thing the reason that we've come into um, the reason that we've come into our Inkscape as well is because we've got a lot more freedom in, in sort of drawing, okay? We, we've got a lot more tools that will help us along our way um, of drawing the shapes that we need and want, all right? And then it's easy to edit colors and things like that afterwards and really create the sort of shape that we're, we're looking for, okay? So if anything sort of goes along this back wall, obviously it's going to be quite flat. If anything goes along this wall, it's going to be quite... Um, rounded uh, rounded is going to be quite uh, angled okay towards this so say what i'll probably end up doing is creating sort of two assets with you and then i'll pause the video because i'm already looking that we're pushing to over two hours uh, uh and then i will show you how to create some of the assets in inkscape and then i'll populate my sinks obviously you're not going to be recreating all of the same assets as me even if you do recreate exactly the same game you're probably going to do stuff differently uh, and populate your scene so you could make any scene any theme for your for your scenes okay so i'll just show you how to make a couple of assets and then we'll go on from there all right so what i'm going to do start with uh is um actually let's make another new layer let's call it ref uh let's i put above by it's meant below uh what i'll do is file import uh, and i'm going to import my scene um of my collage so the reason i'm going to do that Okay, is so that I've got my reference where I need it so next to me so I can oops, uh, 
Okay, so that we're only ever going to export what's on the canvas, but what I can now do is be jumping across, having a look at my reference all the time to sort of see, um, get inspiration or see the sort of things I'm going to do. Because the first thing I'm probably going to do is, is make like a little, I don't know, cabinet with rockets in, then I might make a, a satellite, I'll probably use this as an example, but something along those lines uh to make sort of this uh, hanging satellite here and then obviously i don't probably need to show people how to make planets or anything like that not that you need to but obviously they're pretty simple shapes and then it's just a bit of shading around the edge to make it look three-dimensional uh so what i'll probably end up doing is creating one of these rockets in a cabinet over here let's say so Let's do that first. That's probably a good place to start. So I'm going to use my trusty uh, Bezier tool. Okay, obviously you've got the lines up here so I can create regular path or spiral path or so on. But what I'm going to do is create a layer. I'll do one it above. So I want it yeah, above the top. I'm going to call this. Um, shall I do it in separate layers? Yeah, probably asset one. Okay. I like an underscore in my name, so it just looks a bit nice and stuff like that. Uh, right, so important thing is that we're always following this. So bear in mind, obviously, my object is going to stick out from the wall a little bit. So if I sort of follow this line along a little bit. So, but I'm still going towards my vanishing point here. So let's say we created cupboard like this so it's going to come at this you'll see what i'm making in a second hold control and that'll make a straight line remember vanishing point okay so it goes to about there we'll have to move that point up in a sec okay right let's edit this a bit so if I were to edit that up and across, that's going to be the top of my box. Okay, so that's cool. Quite happy with that. I want to change the color of it now. So if we go, let's have a look. Right, first and foremost, actually, let's just get rid of my stroke color. Uh, so I don't want a stroke. I don't want stroke color down here so let's remove it that looks okay let's go so the top of it will probably be a bit darker we'll see how this looks in a minute it might not look right um and then let's use our tool again okay so remember, horizontal and vertical lines will still work. Okay. So if we come to about here. So I'm going to try really to keep it in line with sort of that, I guess. Uh, so if I come to about there. And then I come to there. And there. Just sort of experimenting with some color choices at the moment. Sorry about that, everyone. I had to pause the video. It looked a little bit different now, but um, unfortunately, my docking uh, station on the side was playing up, so I had to start and reclose and change some settings. Anyway, now I can change the colors as I want to. So um, let's have a look at this. So uh, let's change the colors that I'm working with here. So along the bottom, obviously, we've got the ability to be able to change all of our assets accordingly, uh, which is quite useful. OK, also, we've got the options uh, to correct those colors as well to something more like the color we're going for. So I might just quickly change my opacity. I'm moving all that around. I've changed my opacity of my layers for some reason. So if I want to correct these colors, let's make sure I click on the object that I want. Uh, so ideally, actually, I'd probably have the top color as this one. So if I um, click my move tool, click on here, 
that seems full, and then I can paint bucket that. Okay, so if I make this a bit darker, so I've got my fill and stroke. If yours isn't up, you just double click here, uh, and you can. So we're working on RGB. Obviously, RGB is a screen. See, I might care if I was going to print it. I can increase the red in the color, increase the green. It's fine, so I've made it a slight bit darker, so it's still the same. Same sort of wood. Uh, now I've just got to close off my box at the side so it feels like it's actually there. Uh, so if I come back in uh, to my pen tool, let's close that like that. Okay, uh, let's hold control. So, looking about there and there. And there, nice. Obviously, that's not exactly what I want. So let's get rid of my stroke color. So I want to remove my stroke. Uh, let's also choose my fill color. So if I were to say pink, mm -hmm. let's choose this. Whoops, didn't mean to press that. Sorry. So let's make sure this is still selected. I can eye drop of that color. Um, and being that it's on the other side will make it a fraction darker. Right, so, okay, um, so we've got a bit of a three dimensional shape here. This line isn't exactly working for me here. I think it needs to come down a bit so it feels a bit more three dimensional. Oops, okay. Just zoom in a bit. Okay, cool. Now, this obviously the angle isn't quite working out for me here. So, a couple of options. So it feels a bit more like it's actually part of my object. So I want to keep that line straight bring it to the wall so it actually looks like it's flush with the wall. I would then need to bring, whoops, bring this line in. That's cool. Come to this one. That's fine. And then, so that, obviously, I didn't quite have the vanishing point line. Exactly right, that line's not straight now, so I still need to bring that in marginally. Okay, I see that now. Cool, so this line comes out a bit, this line comes out a bit. Let's bring this line out a bit then just to make it a bit more boxier. Okay. Cool. And that to there. Yeah, and that line probably needs to go there a fraction. So it's just tweaking it. Obviously you can see the pixelation where I'm zooming in. This is what we're trying to avoid here. Um, okay, so. Nice, we might actually, while I'm here, Darken that a little bit like that. Okay, that's cool. You could always add a really thin stroke around the edge as well if you want to sort of define the lines to it a little bit more. Um, but obviously, you don't have to. So let's zoom out a bit. Still not quite happy with that. I think I want that to come out a little bit more. So let's go. I'm just pressing the left mouse arrow at one. Two, click on both those, pressing it once, like that. Yeah, I like that a bit more. Let's press on that once. Nice, okay. So, that's cool. Looks like it's in the room. So what I'm gonna do is create like a, a cabinet, really, that's gonna have like a display, like, like you have at, um, like you have at a museum. I'll make a little plaque on there as well uh, that you pretend there would be text on and so on. The most important thing, obviously, in the escape room is going to be the clue, which I'm going to put on the wall in a bit. Um, and then we're going to have, um, yeah, and then we're going to have, 
our um, then we're going to have our satellite as well. Sorry, I forgot what I was going to say then. So let's uh, come back in here. So I'm going to choose like a light grey this time. You'll see why in a second. I'll do that in a minute. All right. So for this, I will create. This is going to be like um, a box. Like this is going to essentially be our um, cage, uh, our cage, our glass for our enclosure. So like there. Isn't quite lined up, so I'll line that up in a minute. So that's the front of it. As always, move stroke. Um, that's cool. Let's move that in so that's straight. Cool, excellent. But this time around, I do want to change the opacity down on that object a bit. Put on that. Okay, there you go. So we're working with glass now, which is cool. Um, let's change it. Obviously, actually, I'll put the light reflection in them a bit. You'll see what I mean by that. But let's um, let's add the sides onto it first. Whoops, wrong one. So let's go. Now, if I was in Illustrator, it would be remembering the brush I'd used before, and it would be continuing to use that brush. But unfortunately, we don't have that. Right. So let's. That looks about right. That's cool. Okay, nice. Same problem as ever. Okay, let's ink drop it. F7 is the shortcut in this, getting used to all these shortcuts. Okay, now issue again is that it's not opaque, so we've got a solid, which we don't want. Okay, we do want to be able to see through the side. That's good. I'm happy with that. So we've got this sort of glass cage thing going on. Now, depends on what you want to do. You can, if you want to sort of cheat, uh, let's control paste uh, and use the same one again around the back. Oops. That's not ideal, is it? All right, there we go. Not enjoying that, is it? Right, let's. What is going on here then? That's fine. Okay, so that's disappeared a little bit, which is fine. And that goes there. He says. That should come to there. Cool. Okay, okay, okay. Right, so that the opacity we might change up a little bit actually let's just see yep yeah, okay mm. what i might do is just draw another one that didn't seem to enjoy being copied there so one two now we've got a choice, obviously, whether we make it look like we can see the top of it or not. I'm going to cheat and not. Um, so if I come to the top here, come here and there. Okay, let's choose my fill color. Done. Okay. So let's remove our stroke color. Go a bit darker this time, and we will ba, 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 drop right down. But the reason I've gone darker is because it looks a little bit further away, like it's in a bit of shadow there. Okay, that's cool. So we've got this like three dimensional um, object here. Obviously, you can, if you wanted to, now do like a border around the top of it so it looks like um, I'd probably use the same color, but it looks like it's got the same thing going on there. Um, could always change these colors as well so they look a bit smarter um, but I'm quite happy with them at the moment um, but if you did want to obviously you can try and sample and make them look a bit more like the floor um, actually I probably will do that it does look quite nice oh I 
keep hitting I thinking it's the eyedropper tool and it's not the eyedropper tool and this is F7 so I'm going to use that color let's make it a bit darker oops not more green we want to uh, make it a bit darker okay so that's fine that's it that's what I was going for a little bit more green in the color and we'll have to be lucky to select this one but oh, let's go in here I didn't want either of those let's move that out of the way for a second select that F7 to Y drop very nearly pressed I uh, let's make that a bit darker again so you can see inside there Get some of that as well. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, it looks a bit more neutral now. Basically, what I'm trying to do is make sure the eye doesn't naturally just go there straight away. Oops. Uh, when you zoom back out, I don't want people to go boom there. What what the idea of this scene is in a scary is that it's going to be populated with loads of stuff, and people's eyes are going to dart all the way around the screen um, so we've got this sort of glass box here and what I want to do is put like a, a model inside it so it looks like we've got sort of a rocket or something going on uh, so if I scroll across uh, let's quickly copy one of these rocket sort of things maybe we'll change the color uh, so we'll freehand one very fast uh, so let's make sure we're working on a new layer uh, let's call it rocket I know I called it asset one, that's because I wasn't really sure what I was making, but I'm going to call this one asset, uh, this rocket. So I'm going to draw my middle line. I'm going to draw across. Right, I'm just drawing this bit first. So if I click and hold, I get a nice curve. Click and hold again, I get a bit more of a curve. Then I bring it in straight. Okay, I'm going to line it up with that. So let's that so do that okay bring it into a close looks horrendous but we'll change it in a sec so let's change it to blue get rid of that remove stripe okay remember you can come to the edit tool change the angles like so move that around a little bit nice which doesn't really resemble a rocket right at this moment in time but in a second hopefully it will look a little bit more rocket like like that uh, let's see what that looks like when oh dear when we um Okay, let's uh, let's think about this. How can I do this? Um, so, da, 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 da. give me two seconds. I just want to flip horizontal, but I want to duplicate the flip horizontal. So, if I do that, um, and I right, let's copy and paste CV, and then I press H. That will copy it across. Okay, mm, not great, it's a bit too fat, let's be honest, so that's fine. It thinks it's doing me a favour by snapping, but it's really not, so if I, right, let's do it by this, 5, or 53, 5, too much, let's try seven that'll do let's bring that up again okay so we're just roughly going to create a shape so the main thing really to take away is that we're using the pen tool pen tool is a really good tool for drawing stuff um, 
an important tool in your arsenal when you come to creating shapes. Okay, that's fine. So we've got some issues here now, which we will soon correct. Cool. Okay, could do have been a bit smoother, but um, we can always can always have a look at rounding out the edges if you need to a little bit. Uh, yeah, make them smooth. It's probably maybe I can delete that node. That's better. I think I just had one too many points is my main issue there. So some people have a tendency to click, 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 and make loads, and then wonder why it's not particularly smooth. Um, but yeah. I know it's not quite uniform now, either side, but uh, it's not bad. So let's move that line across a fraction. That's fine. Okay. So what we want to do. Right, so let's make this a uh, that kind of color. Let's then make this if I make this a slight different version of that color. So it's got a bit of tone, a bit of depth to it. Let's move that. Oops, not like that. Let's move that across. Oof. Again, Illustrator is a lot more intuitive, but and. It's just a workflow I'm a lot more comfortable with. However, we're going to make something cool in this nevertheless. Um, so let's create our cap to our rocket. Okay, oh, I've got an old tool again. <laughs> so one, round it out. Come here. Round it out. So like that. That's cool. Okay, let's get rid of that. Let's give it something along those lines. That's fine. Okay, so we'll go. So that'll be fine. Really rough shape this. I'm not sure I'm quite happy with it, if I'm honest. I might just stop trying to do my own thing, quickly trace over this one, therefore knowing that I'll actually get the shape that I was going for somewhat correct. So there, 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 get rid of that, and let's make that look up there, like I did there. Okay. Adjust that shape a little, smooth it off. Uh, so control C, control H, oops, not control H, H, control C, control V, H. So control C and control V is copy and paste. H is to replicate, to flip it. Okay, nice. See, this is a lot better rather than freestyling it by eye, which Let's be honest, I wasn't having the most success with. Uh, so it comes to a point. Bring it to this point. Bring it here. I'm not happy with that. Two seconds. Bring it to the point. Bring it to there. Okay. So let's make that a uh, slightly lighter grey. Let's copy paste H. Paste in place would probably be a better paste for what I'm doing, but hey. Okay, let's drag that across so it touches the end. Let's also make that a slightly darker tip. Good stuff. Okay, nearly there. Um, let's create just a quick base for our rocket. Uh, 
second. That's fine. Okay. Bosh. No stroke. That's fine. Okay. If you're worried about that, if it overhangs and stuff like that, um, and you're worried, uh, did I draw that on the reference layer? That wasn't good. Uh, so rocket layer that's supposed to be on. Must have clicked off of it and accidentally clicked onto reference layer. But if you're worried about um, where this is, um, move selection above, move selection below, we'll move it below the shape and so on. If you're if you're worried that it's sitting on top of your rocket and things don't look quite right, you can adjust it accordingly okay let's make that smooth could actually make that bezier corner got some issues with that didn't I? there you go okay um let's quickly uh, copy paste h right down there okay we'll call that that one and then Let's, let's make it a circle. Oh, that's made it on the reference layer as well. So you can see which uh, layer it's made down here. I'll change that to rocket layer. So let's select everything in my rocket layer. Move it across. That's fine. Let's choose a circle for the middle. Oops. Uh, yeah, it's coming up nice. Semi you can you probably can't even see it. There you go. Uh, so if I hold Alt down, it will come in standard. Uh, let's check my opacity is rather low, so I want to change that back up. Uh, I can rescale that if I want now. Um, if I click on the corner of it, whoops, if I, yeah, don't double click it. If I click and drag, I can change the scale. That's cool. Let's see. Uh, I can have a filter, shadows and glow. I'm looking for like a drop shadow around it. Blur radius, let's see, live preview, how strong that is. Drop shadow normally makes it look a bit more three dimensional. Uh, so let's see what happens when I ramp these up. We use drop shadows quite a bit in a minute to sort of make things feel a little bit more like they're part of the scene. Close. Okay, so it just feels a bit more three dimensional on top of there. Uh, and then in theory, we should make this part really, I suppose. So I'm not going to give mine two colors. I'm rushing a bit now, but uh, I'm just going to create that and that. And but cool, boom, boom. A lighter grey. Whoops, no stroke. Let's do that. Just move that onto the front there. Whoops, move that onto the front there. Okay, and then uh, I probably should have done a little box below there like so for the thruster make it darker and here's an example I, obviously I want that behind it so if I go object uh, sorry layer uh, move selection I don't want to move it to layer below I want to move it back one so let's find out whether that is in there create link uh, move object backwards is what I'm looking to do do so just had to look that simple thing up but if you press on the object you do want which is this to bring to the front you would then press home button and it brings something to the front there isn't actually an easier way because normally i'd be able to drop down an illustrator and reorder things in my uh in my layer uh, right so let's select everything there that makes up our rocket okay let's group that rocket together Okay, now what we're going to do, let's zoom out a bit. I 
Okay, and what I'm going to do is place this so that it looks like it's sitting in here. So I might need to, if I double, if I click, oops, I wanted that to be a group. So undo, undo. Let's click on my rocket layer. Okay. So let's select again. Okay, where do I want to move that to? Let's have a look. So I might skew this a little bit just so that it looks a bit. So let's move it, click on the object again, rotate it. Uh, and then I can skew it a little bit. That's it. Okay, let's, let's place that there. Let's see what that looks like. Click off it. Okay, that's all right, but what I need to do obviously is make it look like it's behind glass. So I'm going to press on this glass. Now I know the shortcut and press home. Uh, I'm also going to press home on that one. But also, what I can do is move my rocket layer below my asset layer. Mm, it's not ideal. Let's, whoops, let's have a look at that. Yeah, I might revert back actually. My rocket. I think I preferred. The rocket be above it. Um, yeah, let's so ba, ba, ba. reckon if I move that to about there, and then I move that with my trusty move selection to lab below and then I select my rocket uh, like so and then I uh, bring that forward there we go so I was just getting my structure right um, so it's fine and then let's make it look There you go. So there's a rocket in a cage. Brilliant. Um, let's add a plaque. So we'll go back into asset one. Let's make it look like there's a plaque. So plaques in either white or silver. I'll just draw a quick uh, shape here. Uh, and let's um, write on it. Oh, good. Uh, okay. Oops. Excuse me. Right. I need a text object. That's what I thought I'd done. Apparently not. Rocket. Oh, why is that not working for me? Bear with me, people. So, so what I want to do with this before I add the text, thinking about it, is get my orientation correct. So if I click on the shape again, I can rotate or skew. Let's skew it. Looks about right to me. Make sure it looks roughly like it's in the center. Text tool, click once. Now I've clicked off this, obviously. I'm going to write the words rocket. How very original that is. Uh, I think that text might be ever so slightly too large to fit in that box. Uh, but first, while well, we've got nice, nice and large uh, font, let's see what I've got in terms of cool fonts. Obviously, you can download any new fonts from um, what the font or um, sorry not what the font the font uh, rocket there you go that's sort of um, sci-fi uh, let's try and make it look like it actually fits in that box that'll do let's bring it over okay probably still a fraction too big so we'll come back into my text tool uh, and let's change that to three. That's cool. Obviously the orientation's off. So what I do is I click on it again to get my rotate tool up. Might use my skew tool. Skew that so it's in orientation with the rest. Move it to the middle. That's cool. We got a rocket. Uh, and what we can do, <clears throat> that we did earlier because I want this to look a bit more three-dimensional. Come into my filters, shadows, drop shadow. Let's see if 
this actually works a bit clearer this time. Live preview. He says, like that, that's way too wide. So let's bring that right back in to maybe two. Same problem. Two. And then the vertical offset should be two as well. Two. I'm way too big. We'll blur radius to one. One. Okay, that's starting to look good, but again, you can see it's still too large. So if I change that to 0.5, change that to 0.5, change my blur radius, which seems to be controlling the bulk of it in Inkscape by the look of it, to, uh, let's try 0 0.25. That's nice. Okay, that's kind of what I'm looking for is this clean edge that makes it look a little bit more uh, like it stands out. Okay, um, you can do the same for the floor. So if I choose this object here, I'd have two options. I could obviously draw my shadow the same way we drew it beforehand. So what I might do is come into asset one or I could click on um, my box here so let's let's try the two options and see which one works best actually just before i skip through to the end of the video so i'm not wasting your time anymore okay so that's quite nice that would work probably so let's leave that for now so that makes it look like it's sitting away from the wall um okay i know what's going to happen if i do a drop shadow here unfortunately is that the shadow might appear here so i don't think this is going to work but i will just have a test drop shadow let's just see yeah see now that doesn't look joined if that if that line is appearing here uh that could potentially be fixed right, so if i were to supply it just for a sec close that choose this object press home bring it to the front Mm, no, it's still not doing it. So I'll undo that. And what I want to do is just finish this shadow off a little bit here. Um, again, in sort of Photoshop or Illustrator, you can choose the angle that it comes from and so on. Um, so let's let's use my pen tool again. Let's just do ourselves a little line like this, like this, and like this get rid of that remove the strike change that color i can see it doesn't quite come to the wall that's perfect um let's make sure that's on the right asset let's now choose that let's change the opacity of it sorry let's choose it change the opacity of it right down to five too opaque let's go ten Oh, let's go 10,000 apparently. No, still not quite enough. So let's, right, around about 20 looks good. Perfect. Okay, so we've got a little bit of shadow there. It just feels a little bit more like it's on the floor. Might want to do the same at the bottom um, here. So. This is just to make it feel like it actually belongs in the scene. So uh, what I mean by that basically is that uh, it, feel, it doesn't feel like it's just sort of floating on the scene. Uh, so if I were to um, control and middle mouse wheel there, let's just do something like that with the shadow. I'll correct that in a second. Uh, yeah, surprisingly don't want that. Do want that. I uh, do want that to change, so let's add that to asset one. Let's change that down again to 20. Perfect. Probably can go a fraction darker with this one actually, so let's make the shadow a bit darker. That might work rather than the opacity. Um, change that to 20. There you go. Feels a bit more like it's part of the scene. I will, however, just quickly correct those. I just drew them quick to get rid of them. Uh, 
but yeah, that's fine. Okay, I probably could have pulled that out a little bit more. But yeah, that's cool. Uh, feels a bit more like it's part of the seam. Uh, I could and probably will bring that all the way to the wall so the shadow's a bit darker. Like that. Nice. Um, okay, let's zoom out. Right, so we've got first part. The sign doesn't quite line up. Let's just quickly skew that a little bit more. Same for the font. Skew that. Whoops. Skew that a little bit more. Nice. Okay. So, what I'm going to do now, uh, I'm pause the video. I could fast forward through it, but you're at nearly three hours now. But I'll uh, pause the video, fast forward to the end where I've added all the assets, and then just very quickly talk through what I've done. Okay. Thank you for making it this far so far. I shall see you in just a second. Uh, one thing we obviously can lose, uh, you don't need your reference once you're doing it, but also you won't need your vanishing point as well. So, cool. Okay, so this will have changed a little bit for you. Um, what essentially I've gone and done is create some vector graphics for a few of the graphics, um, for a few of the assets. Uh, you can see here they've all gone on separate layers. I have also um, created shadow layers and things like that to make things sit right because I won't be exporting those but basically anything that's going to be interactive in this scene so basically anything you'll be able to be clicking on I'm going to export as an asset I'm also going to use my astronaut here uh, and I'm going to I'm going to create a sort of a bobbing up and down um, animation where the where the astronaut bobs up and down in the scene just uh, to make things a bit more interesting um, so just slowly up and down I'll probably create like a pipe behind him thinking about it sort of like an oxygen tube or something like that that will go into like a box in the ceiling um, but I can do that afterwards I've got my puzzle on the wall probably could have thought of a slightly more interesting way of done it uh, doing it but this puzzle will lead to clues on what you're supposed to click on and so on um, some signage as well uh, so if we zoom in get a bit of a better view uh, that will lead you to the next room. I haven't really populated. You could populate with a lot more, but this has already taken me a lot longer than I was intending on. Um, so, yeah, and basically, if you want to make your circles look three dimensional, you need to add this sort of shadow line here. So, a slightly darker color, slightly opaque color. So, if I click on one of them, uh, the main circle is 100%, but the side circle around here uh, is about 25%. Uh, it'll be the same color or something a bit darker uh, sorry it, it won't be the same color it'll be darker so say this is like a gray um, so if I click on this its color is this sort of like aqua blue but its opacity is right down to 25 so this is how you get it create some circles for shadows as well create a line back here to give that some depth um, but yeah just trying to create some some shapes and stuff like that and when all else fails don't forget um, that it's really important to sort of try and add some drop shadow to things. So um, I left this one ungrouped. So all it is is a duplicate of my other rocket that we created earlier just because this space needed something. Uh, let's pretend that's the whole of that shape. So remember filters, shadow, drop shadow. Uh, and for a shape like this, right, if we live preview, that's going to be way too big because this was the settings I was playing around with for the astronaut but something like 0.5 and then these can be so that's how blurry the shadow is and that could be like one and that could probably be one as well still finding these fiddly regardless of how long I've been using Inkscape for today okay and then I can apply that and then that makes it a 2d sort of shape whoops feel like it's sitting in there so uh, I've noticed that I didn't add that asset to it any asset basically that I didn't add to it can look weird on the drop shadow so there and then it should have remembered those settings for me so uh, drop shadow apply close nice okay nice okay so that's basically what we're going to do with the scene so we make sure we save our scene we go file uh, right first and foremost I am going to export uh, a PNG of it um, of the whole thing now I know that's really just for the main um, for the title screen I, I want a uh, a complete uh, sort of scene 
Um, I've put this sort of object here that our character when he walks through from left to right in the task screen we're going to mask it out so he's going to walk behind that it's going to look quite cool uh, so I put something in the center to fill that space so I've gone to export I'm going to make sure I've got page because some of my stuff comes over the um, the canvas line and I don't want it to uh, I've set my size to 10 24 5 7 6 I'm going to choose where I'm going to save it so I've already chose so you can press export as uh, and choose so I'm going to call this scene O1 um, full because it's the full background BG. So if I double click on scene 01, I'll make sure I save it in there. That when you press save doesn't actually save it yet, remember that's just the area you're going to save it as. So I've made sure I'm in page so that it doesn't select this little nubbin bit here. Once I've done that, I press export and that's when the save will create and it will happen. Okay, so if I come into my point and click, click on it check out my image you can see that's cut off there and it's saved the full image okay now what I can do uh, and what we'll do is turn off the layers I don't need anymore obviously those two are already gone shadow layers I will keep because that's going to be static but anything that's not going to be static so uh, anything that's uh, sorry that you're not going to be able to click on okay so for example uh, shadow layers will stay ropes will probably stay we can keep those rocket layer will stay because you won't be able to click on those uh, astronaut is going to be animated asset one which is the we'll move that above there actually uh, asset one which is our cupboard so if i did want to rename that now i just call it a uh, stand or something so it's the stand for the rocket um let's turn off venus uh whoops that's interesting um so i've obviously got some stuff on the wrong layers here so mars move to layer mars move well that's very interesting right so um venus does go off but so does the shadow for this so if i press home to move that to the front move that back there you go so i'd just created those layers okay so let's turn now hopefully second time's a charm let's turn off venus let's turn off the sun let's turn off mars i left a shadow behind there on purpose let's turn off um earth interesting jupiter at uh, saturn comes in as earth as well so I need to make sure that I right click move layer Saturn. Obviously move these around back then earlier. So Earth. Okay. Doesn't matter about the base because our object's gonna it's gonna sit behind. If it was sitting in front, yes, I would need to re-export it, but the base is not gonna export. Um and I never put the moon in, so I don't need that layer. Uh and then let's right click delete current layer. Uh, satellite I never put in either and that space for that so we're good we're quite happy with that uh, turn that off so this is going to be our scene background so we're going to export PNG clip page export and we're going to call this um, empty background okay because this is what we're going to build on top of so this will pose as our background land and anything we want to be an interactive asset press export is going to have to be on top of this layer okay so we're going to place it on top so now i can hide shadow i can add ropes i can add rocket stand astronaut is the first one i'm going to be able to animate okay um i'll probably add the hose later on um but for now let's just show you what i'm doing so let's call this astro um okay yeah we're not, we'll just call him astro uh, underscore asset just copy that because i'm going to be re repeating that over and over okay press save on there let's make sure everything else is turned off it's interesting what layer is that on move to layer so let's move that onto my reference so my background's now there this is a cool look whoa so now I need to turn everything else off. Signage, astronaut, well astronaut's what we're exporting actually. Uh, signage needs to be off, which leads me to wonder what 
these are on. So let's move that to layer signage. Cool. That should have been in signage too. Okay, this is all stuff obviously I should have had sorted correctly beforehand, should be on the correct layers. But I found out now. And then my stand also needs to go off, which is here. Okay, most of the stand does. That's very interesting. Okay, so lots of things on wrong layers. Right, let's uh, move to layer stand. Okay, move. Jobs are good. Okay, so we're just left with our astronaut now. So what we can do is we'll just make sure he's selected. Obviously, his selection now becomes selected. Astro asset export. Let's just double check if that did export so that was very fast sure did okay brilliant so just my astronaut at the correct size is exported okay now we need to do that for each and every one of the other assets we're going to export them all out collate them all together and that's going to be our finished um, first scene uh, and then we're going to look at how we're going to animate those in a later video i hope you've enjoyed this i apologize for as long as it's been um, hopefully you've probably done this in stages rather than one go um, but yeah, hopefully you've learned some stuff along the way. Thanks very much. Bye.